I have no idea what happened to Chanter, but you know, he knew the exact time. I told him be there 15 minutes early. He didn't show up. I sent him messages. He didn't show up. He said, I'm on my way. And that was like 10 minutes ago. No, that was now 15 minutes ago, 15 or 16. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what to say to you guys. He might still show up. And if he does, and I can figure out how to like add him. But remember, I'm a technological illiterate. So, you know, um, uh, yes, Tolkien study. I, I, we were in contact earlier today. I told him you got to show up 15 minutes early or so, just so we can see that everything is working. And he, he said yes. And then I talked to him now. It was, it would have been about 40 minutes or so ago, maybe 45. And I told him, remember, you, you can show up now at, whenever, at your discretion. And he says, oh, I'll be there in a bit. And he hasn't shown up. So I don't know what the hell happened. Well, you know, he might have mentioned it to me if he was, you know, <laughs> he could have sent it to me on on Twitter. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any message Twitter messages now. If he sends them to me, I won't be able to see them anyway. But because I'm, I'm I do the live stream with my phone. Maybe. Yeah, maybe he freaked out at the last minute, you know, like maybe he looked up. <laughs> he looked up my record. Oh, no, wait, wait. I think we've got him. Hang on a second. Hang the fuck on here. One moment. Let's see if this works. There you are. Where, where were you, man? <laughs> well, the, first of all, of course, I, I'm going to be completely honest. There's no shame in my game. I had to take I had to take a quick deuce. But also, the minute I got to to the to the to hit the X app, I was like, here we go. Hit the link, and all of a sudden, I click on the link, and it's like this is only available on mobile. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, and no shit. So. There you go, twice, you know, three times a try. Yeah, so well, I course, use it on the phone all the time. Then of course, then phone, my, so then I got my phone, and of course my phone is like, oh, no problem, you want to use this feature? we got to update. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that's why we should have we should have prepared this earlier, maybe. But all right, okay, you're forgiven. It's a justifiable technical mistake there, you know. Technical it's, it's, I wanted to call it justifiable because it, it was one of the same. Well, you know, it's like, you know, it's just one of those things. Well, we're here now, but here's the thing. So I plugged in my phone because, of course, because now, now it's on my phone, now we have to deal with the whole friggin', you know, the notion of my phone needing to be plugged in so it doesn't lose power. Wow. But then we deal with the thing of, I don't know if I've got headphones. Let me see if I've got the headphones. you got a charger or something? Because if you've got a charger, you'll be okay. I mean, if you've got a charger, you can plug it I, in, right? No, no, I've got I've got a charger. Then the only thing was I was worried about was if we uh, if we would have feedback or anything. But we don't seem to be having any. No, no, no. I mean, depends on the quality of your phone, but but it sounds pretty much okay here. I think you, I can hear you anyway, and I'm half deaf. So, oh, well, can everybody in the chat? Can everybody in the chat hear CW? Let us know, please. Um, anyway, we, we, I, I haven't actually even properly started the, the show, so let me begin the show the, the proper way. This is the RPG Pundit, the final boss in Internet Shitlords, and I'm here tonight with uh, a remarkable event. This is an event that used to be very commonplace, and now it has been undoubtedly more than 10 years since I've been able to participate in it, which is to say a debate with somebody from the left because they just don't do that anymore. They just refuse to. Most of the time, they they will claim that they don't want to give a platform to, you know, bigots or whatever, or, you know, what whatever other excuses they make. But frankly, it's because they're all a bunch of postmodernist twits who, who, who don't have a foundation for their arguments, right? Well, that's so, why. It is remarkable to me, and, and this is why, even though he is a lefty, all of you guys who are fans of mine, I know most of you who are fans of mine are, are toward the right. Uh, I, I want you guys to, to show a bit of respect to CW for showing up here on my turf to do this debate. That takes, that takes some guts. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's very laudable, actually. And I don't, know, I don't know if it's a sign of the times that, like, you know, wokeness has been falling apart on the on the edges for quite a little while now. You know, the oh, multinational corporations have lost five trillion dollars off of wokeness. 
and they're all starting to dump DEI and all that. But it could be that, or it could just be that um, CW, who I don't know all that well, might just be crazy, and that's why he's doing it, right? <laughs> Maybe it's a little of both. I'm not sure. But for the sake of my viewers, because I know there might be a couple of guys here. It looks like there's a couple of people here that are fans of yours, um, CW. But uh, for the benefit of my viewers, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself and explain a little bit about who you are and uh, what you do in relation to the RPG field. I know you have a YouTube channel. So uh, anyways, tell us about yourself for a little bit before we start the debate. Not a problem. Not a problem. First of all, RPG Pundit, I got to tell you. Thank you, thank you for hosting me and having me. And, and take it easy. I mean, you're 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 the final boss. And I gotta <laughs> yeah. tell you, I mean, I jumped right to the top. I mean, I, I must have gotten the cheat code, or you know, you know, you know, because I, I I skipped all the the level one guys and just went right to the final boss. I you know, what I, mean? I must not know what I'm in for. <laughs> I am crazy, absolutely certifiable. You know, for getting in, getting into the lines then. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm on the left, but I'm, I'm my own person. We're, you know, I'm a TTRPG aficionado since I was 12 years old. Though I won't claim that I've been, you know, in depth and in the field and followed and, and participated since that age. Like most people, you know, I, I came and went. I've always stayed, you know, tried to stay, you know, aware of what was going on. But it, it wasn't until, like most people, you know, I, I went through a divorce and then, you know, packing up the old stuff and then, realizing that some of this stuff still had some some flavor some some nostalgia to it i got you know some stuff out and then started slowly collecting filling in the blanks of the old collection and then from there the you know the itch was still there the fever got ignited and from filling in the blanks and the old stuff just started continuing on with that like a lot of people talk about you know i i'm not at any current tables i i'm doing the old solo thing I'm a fan of this material and this culture. I've always been a fan of, you know, what's going on with nerd dumb, science fiction, fantasy, movies, comics, music, everything, you know, what's going on. And I stay abreast and I stay, you know, aware of, and, you know, I have the, the channel. I've been on YouTube since 2015. I had a main channel uh, devoted mainly to new age spirituality, mysticism, ufology, conspiracy, mm -hmm. and kind of got into kind of a, a foot in the field of both that and kind of debunking some of the wonderful wild, wild people there. I actually kind of abandoned that channel and kind of came to the TTRPG space and started TTRPG focused YouTube channel in the hopes of de-stressing and getting away from, uh, Anxiety and conflict with people. And unfortunately, I guess it's into my blood. I find <laughs> conflict and controversy wherever I go, and manage to find myself embroiled in yet another brouhaha over here. Imagine mm -hmm. that, and you know, kind of leads us to there. I'm also a practicing attorney, um, you know, so I think that has some relevance to the stuff that we're going to be talking about today. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I had some videos, you know, covering this stuff that, that, I've, that I've privated because I, I, I thought that I think there were some people that were feeling some anxiety and also some side issues that were getting confused con and confusing the issue for some people. Um, so I, I tried to make a summary video to kind of simplify things and burn things down. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not here because I'm trying to cover any for any bad people. I have a what I'm calling a hashtag me dude. Uh, story to share. I mean, I know that people have been hurt by people. I know that Jim Demsboro, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, you, Jim Bradley, have, have, have experienced, you know, being slighted and being canceled, you know, for want of a better term. I know what that feels like. I have an open court, you know, case in, in, in Colorado federal court from a guy who used to talk to blue avians and considered himself a modern day Enoch who took umbrage at the fact that I thought that that story was probably less than truthful. And I had spoke about my doubts about that story on YouTube. He didn't like that and sued me over it amongst other things. And in that process of suing me, you know, accused me of all sorts of wild and wonderful things, tried to link me to the deep state cabal and Tom Hanks's possible predilection for eating babies with pizza and stuff and walnut sauce and all that wonderful jazz. So I know what it's like to be, you know, victimized. And so when I talk about this stuff with the article, I'm not trying to, to, to say that anything that happens to people is, is okay. Or that, that, you know, being gang stalked or, you know, harassed online is okay. 
I'm talking about the article, you know what I mean? But it is what it is. And, you know, hopefully I think we're going to have a lively debate. I don't expect you to pull any punches. I wouldn't want to have any punches pulled by you. I came here to, to debate the RPG Bundant, the final internet shitlord, you know, boss of bosses. You know what I mean? I know mm -hmm. I've been a long time subscriber and I, you know what I mean? I want to feel the <laughs> I did not know you were a subscriber, but that's great. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Long time fan, long time subscriber. You know what I mean? I won't say I got any of your stuff. That's just only because the Invisible College, I, I, I tend to shop by by discount price. And the Invisible College is always never making, you know, never making the cut. You know what I mean? It's on my it's on my wish list. Believe you me, it's right up my alley. The, the most you know occult I mean? authentic RPG ever written. So there you that, go. That, that's I what mean, I hear. That's what I hear. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, it's, 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 it's I'm scared. I try to make my my products relatively inexpensive, right? Like Lion and Dragon, I think that the soft cover is still only like it's less than twenty bucks. I think um, my publishers pick the prices, but I always try to push them to keep it low, right? But I mean, Invisible College is like four hundred and thirty-two pages, so we made it as cheap as we could possibly make it. You know, but even there, you have like soft cover and hard cover options. So, anyways, if any of you out there are interested in a cult modern RPG that is OSR and uh, but is based on uh, authentic, historical, and modern interpretations of uh, of magic. Uh, check out the Invisible College. <laughs> All right. So thank you for the opportunity to do that little commercial break there. Um, so CW, you said that you're not currently playing in any gaming groups. Is that correct? That who would have me? Well, have you tried getting into groups online or something like that? I'm not, you know, I'm really, I got to tell you something. I'm really not interested in, in, in playing, you know, online. I had, you know, I tried, there's some, you know, play by post things that I got hooked up with on discord, but it never got past, you know, round three before invariably things would always kind of, you know, S the bed for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I'm really, you know, if it's not, if it's not happening in, in real life for me, I, I, I'm one of these guys. It's like, if it's, not happening. I mean, I, I always, you know, think about it and stuff, but everything has been always been so far. It's always it's it's this this solo thing that seems to be taking over more and more because people are having trouble finding people to play with in real space. And I'm, I'm right mm -hmm. near New York City, so you'd think it would be easy. But but, you know, so, so far, not so good. You know, I'm in South America and I've got four gaming groups going on. So but, you know, then again. I'm the RPG pundit. Right? There you go. There you go. Um, so, do you think this is? We're not. We're not in the topic of the debate yet. But I, I'm. I'm always a little bit curious about this when I meet a YouTuber who has a channel that's based on commentating on RPGs. Um, do you think that there's some kind of potential disconnection involved from you having a YouTube channel about gaming, but you're not actually gaming now? I mean, I know you gamed in the past, right? But Right. I, I, I don't, because I got to tell you something. You know, I think that with me, I think that I am gaming. You know, part of my journey with, with TTRPGs is discovering this, and it, this has to do with, you know, solo gaming. You know, there are people that are going to say that, well, you know, solo gaming is not gaming. And within the solo gaming community, there are people that have debates about whether or not uh, is prep part of solo gaming. Are you only gaming when you're actually, you know, rolling dice? Uh, is a fighting fantasy game book uh, a solo uh, RPG experience, or is that something else? And I got to tell you something. My part of my journey is realizing that if I am getting taken to some other place, if I am leaving. You know my space if i'm if my brain is really working at some other level when i am even thinking about mechanics with a book then i am in i'm gaming yeah you're involved in the a lot of this stuff with with ttrpgs and my fascination with rpg is 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 meta like i have this thing on my channel that i talk about like a meta rpg where, you know, it's, you know, a lot of my concepts, you know, about gaming, you know, talk, you talk about the Invisible College, you know, a lot of this, the, my concepts about TTRPG play, you know, dovetail with my concepts of, you know, I know, I, I, I know that you have a less than um, forgiving attitude about chaos magic, right? Am well, yeah. 
chaos magic is uh yeah, I, I, I've got some issues with that, but I mean, there are there are some people who do chaos magic that are that are more legit than others. But yeah, <laughs> understandable. But you know, to to say this is that I I have a I have a Catholic approach to mysticism, and I have a, a Catholic approach to to practice and praxis. So mm. a lot of the times when I when I think about these things, it, it's all inclusive, and I try to be as transcendental with my enjoyment and my, you know meditations as possible so you know mm -hmm. I, I i don't try to, i'm trying to find out where i'm going with ttrpgs and so a lot of this is just figuring out do i need a table mm -hmm. or you know am i at a table already when i'm you know getting this you know having experiences and trying to figure this stuff out even if the this the experience is going to be you know i spent five thousand dollars six thousand dollars on ttrpg books and now we gotta throw them in a dump because that was the purpose. We figured out that we, we don't have any purpose for this stuff. Hmm. You know what I mean? It's if maybe that, that was the game, but I understand the question. I think it's a pertinent question to ask. I think it's a pertinent question for me to contemplate and think about, but I, well, you know, there are people that think that this is, you know, TTRPG, this is gaming. This is what the game is. And this is not, I mean, and, and I understand that. And I, and I can, I can, I don't have to be combative with it. I can, I can take it on, but I don't, you know, have, a, have, a, have a problem with that. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's also a part of it related to the idea that um, if you're, I mean, obviously if you're running a, a, the type of YouTube channel where you do live gaming, you kind of need to be gaming. Right. But even if, let's say if it's like my channel and I think your channel is similar where I don't do that, but what I do is talk about both the RPG industry and RPG gaming as a, uh, the practice of it. Um, I think that if I wasn't running games at, at this time, I would probably run out of ideas. Certainly as a game designer, I would, I would run out of ideas if I wasn't running games. But in any case, I'm not going to be the judge on this matter. Um, I'll leave that to our live chat who tend to be very opinionated. I already see that L here has sent a message for you saying Garibay and Shauner are looking for players. You could always join them. <laughs> that, you know, listen, I got to tell you something. I would regard that as a question. Like I, I am not a pro if Garibay is looking for a player, like I would travel for that opportunity. You know what I mean? I would I'd like to see, I'd like to see I would absolutely That's what I would do. <laughs> You know I want mean? to see a Garibay running a session. <laughs> Absolutely. And the question would be, would he run the session in his car? You know that? <laughs> I hope. Yeah, it'd be like the, I mean, what's that Jerry Seinfeld show with in the car, you know, with the comedians. <laughs> yeah, I just hope people know is that I would not be joining that session in spite of what I've heard about Garibay and how he runs the session, <laughs> but because of. of. Yeah, I see. All right. So there because we go. Uh, CW is a Garibay fan. That's our first revelation of the night. And uh, now, uh, how, how before... could you not be? I mean, it's compelling. You're like, like, first of all, it's you know what I mean. Like, it's you know, it's Garibay you is compelling in the same it. way that watching some kind of a train wreck is compelling. You know, <laughs> there is a certain well, there's yeah. a certain ability to look away when you ha happen upon one of his videos. That's true. You can create, well, or crazy like a fox. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Say what you want about J. Scott Garibay. Besides Mike, you know, Matt Mercer, do you know someone else whose videos are regularly commented on by, like, I don't know how many different YouTube channels? D Diversity and Dragons regularly has a J. Scott Garibay. Oh, well, he's on here today. Lodge will have a regular segment about him. Like everyone talks about Jason <laughs> Guy Garibay. Yeah, well, you he's currently I mean? on being like the most awesome. And clearly, it, it, I mean, it's paying off, isn't it? Um, I, I, I noticed another question here, but before I get to that, um, first off, I'm going to point out to everyone, as I typically do with the uh, with these live streams, uh, there is this live stream is not sponsored by anyone, and uh, I do not have monetization on in it. So if uh, if you guys want to support me, then uh, feel free to send out some of those super chats. Um, I do not 
practice the, the, the practice of only reading comments that are super chats. I will read any comment that I find interesting. But of course, if you send a super chat, I'll pretty much be obliged to read what you wrote unless it's something that might you know get me banned from YouTube or something like that. <laughs> so uh, so there's that. Um, Der Rabbit has a question for me. He says, Pundit, what was that you said about once a world is built out and working on its own mechanics about it being real? Yeah, well, I, I you know, I guess that if you were listening to what uh, CW was just talking about with the um, kind of his mystical perspective on 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 gaming, um, what I'm saying is is in some ways there's it's so much. I can't deny that probably my own hermetic background is part of what leads me to 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 conceive of things in that way, right? Because one of the one of the, the concepts, the core concepts in Hermeticism is that um, things that are symbolic are actually real, right? Like um, that, that we tend to think of things that are just symbolic as not being real, you know, and, and that they're just, you know, because they're because they're not material. Right. But actually, symbolic things can be incredibly real and they can they can affect the world in very real ways and sometimes in more powerful ways than physical actions can. Right. Like think about advertising, for example. And in in gaming, the peak experience of gaming is that if you if you create a world and go to enough effort to make it emulative in a successful way, and then that world is played in a campaign for enough time, the world takes on a real characteristic that gets beyond the expectations of the DM in that things start happening in that world that the DM did not himself meticulously plan out like a script, right? As long as your game is a script, all you're doing is this kind of story game that is that is um, only producing a sort of fiction, right? And and I know that story gamers use the term the fiction, and they they're somehow proud of that when they're actually like just admitting to being retarded, right? <laughs> but when you create a, a full blown emulative world that has things that happen in it that the DM doesn't expect, but re but but come to organically as a product of events in actual play then suddenly the world becomes real in the same way that your player characters if you're if you're a player when you hit the immersive moment and suddenly instead of deciding what your character is doing you just kind of realize this is what the character would do that character becomes real in a way so i don't know maybe that maybe that has something similar to what um to what chandra was saying here um but anyways today we are mainly going to uh to be talking about the debate of the article that came out that was about the bad behavior of certain people. Um, this the thing I talked about in my previous live stream. Um, <laughs> L has a comment, 90% of Super Chats go to meatball tuna supplies, 10% to Pundit Tobacco Reserves. That's about right. Yeah, the proportion might be a bit off, but but just about, yeah. Um, so, okay, the the subject of tonight has to do with this article that came out. Um, just, uh, uh, well, I guess it was only about, uh, what, a week or two ago, but <laughs> it seems about like nine days, I think, yeah. yeah, nine days. I think uh, and it was, it's a tight, it, it was originally released on, in medium and, uh, it was called the worst people you have never met or what I learned during a four year academic study of the, of online harassment in the Dungeons and Dragons community. The, the attributed author is Dr. Cleo Bell Wiseman, who makes a point at the beginning of the article to um, express her uh, academic credentials, that she is a, um, what do you call it? She, she's a, she has a degree in social work and, uh, or sociology and psychotherapy, um, and links to, provides a link to, to papers that were published by her. So it tries to put a whole academic veneer on things. And the first as I pointed out in my previous live stream, the first 20% of that article is an exposure of a, a group of people who were the kind of the woke mob of around 2014, 2015. The word woke wasn't used at that time. Um, back then, we called them SJWs or uh, the Outrage Brigade. Um, but you know, and and those people had done some pretty god awful things that that we already knew they did. But the kind of novelty that appears in this article is that allegedly Wiseman 
uh, interviewed all these people in the context of it being for an academic study and got audios, actual audios of the conversations with them. And in these audios, they admit to a whole bunch of really god awful things that they did or were doing, you know. Um, and uh, so it's it's pretty much like a confirmation of just how terrible these people are. But then after about 20 percent of the article, it suddenly changes topic to being exclusively about Zach Smith and a, a what you, what I have termed, you know, Venger got the hashtag for this whole brouhaha. He called it Twatgate, and it's a great hashtag. But but I think I can be credited with this part with the section, the second section of this article, which is 80 percent of it being the Zach Smith hagiography. A hagiography is a biography of a saint, right? Like it portrays Zach Smith as the one person and the only person who's never done anything wrong in the D&D world and, and is absolutely blameless for this litany of horrible things that has happened to him, both in the gaming field and in his personal life, all of which yeah. he has no culpability for, right? Incredible. Who knows? So that's, that's what's going on. What you know? have you done what an academic for you know what I mean? I feel like there I feel like there might be a Polish joke in there somewhere, but her name is Weissman. <laughs> anyway, so um both myself in my live stream and I've been on Twitter and uh, CW have, have made extensive commentary on this. And uh tonight we're going to debate some of the points of that commentary. And uh we had agreed beforehand that that this being my um my my channel being the bigger channel by quite a bit uh, i uh i'm going to set the agenda on different points and on each point we will make we will each make the arguments and um and you know each of us will have time and we're not going to we're going to try not to talk over each other um and then after that we will you know periodically we will pause to allow the live chat to make questions or comments and uh, then after, uh, you know, when I've uh, basically used up all of the talking points that I put in my notes here, um, then if CW feels that there's some other point he wants to bring up that I did not bring up, he can bring it up and I can do the rebuttal, okay? Um, and I think that's pretty much going to be the, the format. And obviously, you guys in the chat can uh, make your comments and set up questions that that we may or may not answer, depending on if uh, if the if the question you ask has to do with a point that's happening later on, I might leave it for that. And uh, if um, and if, and if not, if it's a if it's a relevant question, we'll we'll try to answer it. But of course, both myself and CW have the uh, the right to not answer any question that we don't want to answer necessarily, right? Um, Tolkien study says I love his pipe. Well, I don't. I guess you might. This might be the first time you're seeing me, um, or one of my videos. But I am. I'm kind of well known for being a pipe smoker. So very much like that quote from Tolkien that every morning I wake up and the first thing that comes into my head is great. I have another day of smoking pipes. Um, there's All a right. joke that I'm gonna let it go. All right. So the first thing I'd want to 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 point out is something a bit meta but it's it's related to the videos that you made the the live streams that you made and um it's that in your in your live streams you particularly focused on grim jim um sure. the guy those of you who are in the chat who have seen who saw the earlier issues of episodes of inappropriate characters know that uh grim jim was one of my co-hosts on inappropriate characters for the first couple of years of that show um, I've known him way longer than that because, of course, he was part of the the, the OSR for a very long time, and um, he he was one of the people who was very heavily targeted by many of the bad actors that are called out in this in this article. And Grim Jim jumped into this into the fray of talking about this article with a lot of gusto. Um, his opinion, and I know this because I've talked to him behind the scenes. Uh, is that obviously whatever else is might be imperfect about the article, the the dam the damnation of these people that did so much wrong to him and to to several others of us uh, makes it worthwhile. Um, now in 
in your videos, you have at one point you have essentially accused him of being a co-conspirator and having been like in on it, right? Like having been involved in all of this. And I would have to point out to you that that um, I can say from direct experience that um, that, that I, I really don't think that's true because when the article first came out, one of the first people that I talked about it with, I mean, I talked about it with various people, with him, with Alex Macris, with uh, uh, Avenger and other people too. Um, one of the, the first things that, that, that I did was talk to him. And at that time, he really had no idea what it, where it came from or what it was or any of that, you know. Um, but he was an early booster of it. Now, you claimed that... It, including in your most recent video where you just kind of summarize the other videos that you've now privated, um, that he was in essence the publisher of this. But I mean, factually, in a very, very direct factual form, that is not true because it was first published on Medium. And then it was taken down very quickly, I think in less than 36 hours of being on there, it was gone. Um, and then it was put up in an archive form. And that archive form didn't have the audios, but then somebody else put up the audios so that they could all, uh, once again be heard in a different site. Um, and I was left kind of wondering, you know, because of the videos that you did. Um, so I, I got back to, to Grim Jim today, and um, he's confirmed to me that he was not the guy that put that up on the archive and he was not the guy that put the audios up either. Um, but uh, there were a few other things that you had said that I, at first I thought um, you might have been wrong about in a certain way because he, uh, Grim Jim did say certain things about how uh, essentially Cleo Wiseman was not, was basically not, uh, that had, had not planned to put the audios up. And um, you had claimed that that was proof that he was in on things. Um, but um, I talked to him and what he said is that he, from a third party that he is not at liberty to name, had been told this. And uh, now the thing is, having spoken to him for a bit, it seems to me that there's a bit of a question as to whether that third party actually knows this or was just kind of supposing it and Grimm chooses to believe it, you know? But um, in any case, the, the, he, the statement he made was based on something and uh, not just his own supposition, but uh, I'm still left with a lot of doubt about whether that was the case or not. Um, he, he also has heard from this same source about something he said and that you repeated in your videos, which is that um, Cleo Wiseman, who, who never had a very big internet presence, but basically drops off the face of the earth sometime around 2022, um, that Cleo Wiseman is suffering from cancer. Now he heard, again heard this from that same source. Um, and it, it, I, from the conversation with him, it sort of sounded to me like that source though was not from the people that wrote or published the article, but rather from somebody who was who is connected to uh, and this is probably why they want to stay anonymous, but it's connected to one of the people that got burned by this article, i.e., you know, um, Hill or Fiona Geist or Patrick Stewart or one of those, you know, maybe Patrick Stewart or Hugh Scogan, I don't know who, but one of them. Um, but in any case, I wanted, first of all, to make a defense of Grim Jim in that uh, I think that you were, you're, 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 you're definitely, I think you're definitely wrong about him being in direct contact with the people who actually published this article and may or may not have authored it, okay? Um, because for starters, Grim Jim, Zach doesn't talk to him. He's got him blocked, I think, you know, like he has most of us. Um, but okay, you can, you can respond to this in whatever way you want to. Are you still with us? Uh-oh, <laughs> I think he froze. All right, let's, let's wait a moment to see if he's back. Um, this is a bad moment for him to have frozen up on us. Can you guys can hear me, right? Are, am I still with you? Anyone? I hope I'm not the one that froze. Now I can see myself moving, I think. 
Okay, you guys can hear me, but you, you, it, it does appear the chanter has frozen up on us here. Um, so, all right, let me like take a look at the comments while we wait to see if he reconnects. I hope he reconnects. Otherwise, this was the shortest, <laughs> shortest debate of all time. Um, oh, and now he's dropped. All right, let's see if he comes back. Um, Moai says, I'm from Brazil and I'm translating this. Okay. Uh, Steam Bob says, I only started smoking a pipe last year. It's hard to get decent pipe tobacco in my town, though. Yeah, well, I don't know. If you're in the U.S., Steam Bob, there's websites you can go to. Um, pipesandcigars.com, for example. And depend, and there's one or two states that don't allow shipping tobacco to them uh, across state lines. But mo in most cases, you should be able to get tobacco from them. Um, let me see what else. Some dude says, pundits comb over, putting in work, damn. Well, it's a bit of a comb over, I'll grant you that. But eventually, I'll just have to go bald or something. Oh, you're back. Oh, I apologize. All right, no. I didn't know what you heard of what I said there, but um, basically, you're... I heard, a, I, heard, I, I heard up until probably you saw me disappear. Let's just assume that I heard up until you saw me disappear. Oh, what you're saying is, is that... Um, so, so I think that you're wrong about Grim Jim being a collaborator. Okay. Well, let, well, first, first of all, let, let me let me say a couple of things. Number one, let's start with that. You know, I said that Grim Jim was a collaborator. Let let me say this because I want to make sure that we don't get get confused. Um, I made my last the last video that I made that I made that I that I took down. I made statements about the possibility of likely candidates of who was involved. And I'm gonna say this, I speculated about who the most likely candidates of people were. And I made it in a very strong way. And I'm not saying that you are out of bounds for suggesting that I said that Grim Jim was involved or was a player mm -hmm. because I made the suggestion strongly that he was a likely candidate. But let me make it definitively clear. if people got the impression that I was making the case that I have a smoking gun, we've solved the case, we've cracked the case, it was this guy, this guy, and Grim Jim, I apologize, and I retract those statements. Okay. Okay? All right. Well, and that good. was part of the reason that I took the videos down was because it became very clear to me that Grim Jim is having some sort of strong reactions okay and i don't want people to experience again what they were experiencing if they were experiencing moments of false accusations against them i had my speculations based on the following look and i'm gonna do this grim and grim jim has made statements like if you had gotten an anonymous email grim you know you should know that maybe someone and i've said things like i think sometimes i've said things like use terms of art in the conspiracy theory world like useful idiot and patsy that may have activated him and made him say things that i think that maybe he thought was making it better that made it worse because i would say things like maybe you got an anonymous email from someone who knew that you would be a good patsy or useful idiot, that you would just get so impassioned about this, that you would run with it. And the next day he would say, well, you know, there's some people have suggested that maybe I'll just go on an anonymous email. I didn't. Three people were pushing this story to me. Three people. And I was like, well, now you're definitely involved in a conspiracy, you jackass. You know, can I, can I jump I in for a moment? That, you know? Can I jump in? Here, yeah. Here's the thing. Um, Grim Jim, like me, is a very well-known personality in the in the OSR, right? And and exactly the same thing happened with me, which is that um, those people are probably just people who watch his channel, right? Like as soon as any news pops up anywhere that's like a public yeah. piece of news, and someone thinks, "Oh, the pundit will want to hear this," they send it to me. Usually, I get multiple instances right. of. And in fact, I in the it. case of this this um, article, that happened to me too. But it doesn't mean that it was a setup. I well, to let be me ask you this. Let me, yeah, no, I hear, I hear. But just, just, just let me look. You, you, 
let me do this. Let me do this. Let, let's make it simple. RPG Bundit, let me ask you a question. Here's the deal. This article went up on Medium.com. It came off of Medium.com. When Grim Jim made his live stream video, putting it out there, it had already come down. Yeah. So, but for him publishing it, this person, Dr. Clea Weissman, never would have had the legal exposure, the liability, the professional liability, and any of this stuff happened to her. See. No one came out and published this article or talked about this article being on Medium or, or published this archive, but for him. But for his actions, none of this stuff would have come out. Now, here's the other thing. I, I don't know who he's talking to, but since this article has come out, he has made statements. He has said the audio was included without the doctor's permission. He mm -hmm. said the doctor never intended the, the article to go up. He has said I, I, the edit, there was an editor involved who may have changed some of the material. He said there is a tonal shift in the second half. He has said the video was not uh, to be, the audio was not to be included. The author has advanced. He keeps on saying stuff that indicates that he has more knowledge about, about intimate knowledge about this, 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 this article, its creation, and how it came out. So when I say this stuff, it's not like I, I want him to be involved or I want this information to be coming from him. But I'm talking about it as if it's it, it coming from him because it's coming from him. Okay. You know? So to respond, in the in the first place, and in your defense, um, all, everything you've said there is 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 actually factually true. Um, but like I said in my in my preamble to this point, um, the fact that Grim Jim has been getting information from some people doesn't mean that that information is coming from the people who publish this right because as as i mentioned some of it could be people who are instead privy to conversations going on i don't know on discords or somewhere like that um that are from the other side who are putting up their own theories on this and and grim jim is running with it and also in your defense i will point out that um Grim Jim, it takes very little for him to be all in on something. We know this for a fact. Right. He was all in on Brexit. He was all in on COVID fanaticism. You know, he was he was in on I mean on Remain in Brexit, right? And in being pro-vax in the COVID thing. And and he was just right. to the point of fanaticism. He's running with it until death, right? Like that's his his way of doing things, right? To the point that he was um, you know, he jumped off of uh of inappropriate characters because of our differences in our opinions about how world governments were handing handling COVID, right? Right. right. Um, look, 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 look. Here's the thing. Again, like if I'm saying if I'm making suggestions, like he's involved, and I'm not trying to say that he's involved, but what he, what I'm saying is that he is making affirmative statements that seem to indicate, or would lead one to to believe that he's got intimate knowledge about what's happening with Dr. Cleo Weissman. And when he says the audio was not to be included in all this stuff, if he doesn't, like, that's why I say things like, Grim Jim, come on, talk to me. Because if he would tell me or tell other people or answer questions about what this stuff, what's going on with this stuff, then we would have answers. And I understand that you're friends with him, but it's like, this, it's like, look, I, I have no, I have no, I like Grim Jim. I, I, look, I have no desire to see him embroiled or in trouble. I have no desire to, to have him be, you know, you know, uh, involved in this. I, I would have loved it if I could, if I was sharing, like if I could turn back time, I would have him never have gotten involved in this. I would have him have gotten an anonymous email that this article had gone up and been taken down and have him seen it and gone, well, if the article was taken down, or read it and have had the, the presence of mind like you and I did to say, this is, this is a crazy article. This is no way this was written by a licensed certified social, uh, you know, licensed psychotherapist. There's something kooky, or maybe have just had the presence of mind to reach out to someone like you to say, what do you think about this? So, or some other, you know, former He academic. did talk with me about it, but he never listens to me. That's the problem. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You know but, what I mean? Because look, no, it is but, what it did. But regarding... But regarding the, the the point you make that if he hadn't, when you say publish, I think what you really mean is publicize this uh, 
this oh, article. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, no, no. Um, but when I say published, I mean public. Look, he published. When I say published, I mean this. Look, I mean, you you testify as to what he told you. But I can tell you this. In his updates, he uses the royal we. He says, we put, we re he says specifically in regards to the audio, he says, we retrieved the audio. I can tell you that. I would certify today in, to a court that he used the royal we, we retrieved the audio. Yeah, but we, now, means, that's, that's, that's just language. That's a person's use of yeah. language. And, I, and that he, doesn't he mean, I'm not going to hold in the, in the OSR retrieved the audio, because this is the yeah, thing. Yeah. There, Look. Like the, I said, the, I'm, the, not, the, I'm not here trying to make the, the case article. That the article involved. was archived, right? And yeah. and it was there. And and at or near the same time that Grim Jim did his first video on it, there was already a thread about it on the RPG site, right? Um, okay. There was threads about it on um, on Reddit that were later, I think, blocked because, of course, Zach. Any mention of Zach is banned on Reddit, which is one of the the things that are arguably unjust that happened to Zach, right? Um, and so the fact that it's an article defending Zach still doesn't, you know, still get, it's going to get banned on Reddit because they're just determined that he's, he's uh, you know, Dan Nacho Memoria, right? But um, so this, this stuff would have come out anyways, right? Now, without a doubt, Grim Jim was a big booster of it because, again, out of everybody that was attacked by these people, and and I think there were four of us who were attacked in very big ways by all of these people that are mentioned there, which is to say right. him and Zach, James Raggy, and myself, right? He's right. the most sensitive of all of them. And, and, you know, he himself said it led him to, you know, suicidal thoughts and everything. He's, he's, he suffers from depression. None of this is private right. business because he's talked about it many times. Um, and so for him, the, like, he's still to this today, you know, as of my conversation with today, um, he says that whatever problems the article has, it is nevertheless vindicated by the fact that it exposes the awfulness of these people, right? Um, and so that all of that is fair, but I don't think it's it's accurate to say that if Grim Jim hadn't done a video, that it wouldn't have continued to be talked about because inevitably, I would have done a video about it. Um, you know, uh, Venger would have done his his little video about it. Uh, maybe diversity and dragons. I don't know. Um, so. well, like, I mean, look, I mean, if, if, if you had, if you had been sent the archive, if the archive, had, look, if my timeline is incorrect, if I am incorrect about his, his YouTube video being the source of the dissemination of the archive and it had been on other places or had been sent to other places, if I'm, if I'm factually incorrect, I'm not above admitting to being factually incorrect. I'm not above being cor corrected and I'm not above, you know, retracting statements. Like, as, you know, I am not, I'm about, you know, I'm not so soft, you know, skinned that I'm, you know, above, you know, correcting myself or, or having the, the factual record corrected. I want an act accurate historical record and I don't want anyone to be damned. I've made the statements that I've made and when I made the reformed, you know, uh, video today, it was to take, you know, out, you know, passion and, and you know, stuff that would have, you know, confused things and to provide clarity. If there's more clarity to be had about something, then I want that clarity to be introduced. I, I And I'm not going to let my ego stand in the way to, to be corrected. So I mean, in the live chat, L says N World had a thread before Grim made his video. Um, okay. and, uh, Shark points out that, um, Tenkar did videos about it and Tenkar would have inevitably done those videos because that's what he does. Uh, and Diversity and Dragons did a show about it. So it, it got discussed so all those, over but the those, those shows all happened afterwards. Those, after those shows Grimm did happen after like said, Grimm, but we don't the, think they happened the, the because The correction would have to be, the correction would have, like I said, we're not talking about if we say things like inevitably this would have happened. Mm -hmm. If I'm saying that the moral and ethical harm happened when Grim Jim broke this story after this person had done this, retracted it off medium, and then it was archived by people. And like I'm saying, you know, part of this is about the fact that Grim Jim in his statements ha is making the case that he is in intimate contact 
I know there's speculation that you're putting forward that he's getting these contacts from other people that may not be people that are the people involved. But what I'm telling you is this, look, Jeff Rents is involved, is connected to Zach S. Zach S is connected to Jeff Rents and Grim Jim is intimately connected to both of those people through this playing games with porn stars collective that they have. They are. Well, no, I mean, he's got his own, uh, Grim Jim has his own show, which is in some ways, I guess it could have been inspired by, by Zach's. Okay, uh, like I said, I'm not, I'm not about they're correct. Two different, I'm not about um, correct. You know, uh, uh, they're two different environments completely. And, and like I said, uh, Zach does not get along with Grim Jim these days. Nor with me, nor with Jim Raggy, nor with Alexander Macris, right? He's he's burned all of his bridges. And that was one of the things I think I commented in on one of your videos or something that or on Twitter, that I think you have a a very exaggerated opinion of the current popularity of Zach S among the the anti-woke OSR, right? Because he's basically burned us all in some way or another, you know. Listen, I've I've a very exaggerated opinion. Look, like I said, you know, I there are things that but that, you know, but part of that is this, is that like when we talk about when I talk about the relevance of it, look, if we if, if I'm, I'm like I said, I'm not above above correction. If things that need to be corrected need to be corrected. But it's also this. We talk about the harm that could be done to this Dr. Cleo Weissman, regardless of, of whether or not it happened before this or before that. Grim Jim made the decision to make his video, knowing that Dr. Cleo Weissman had already taken down her article, meaning that what anyone who covers this, knowing that Dr. Cleo Weissman has acted affirmatively to say in some way, shape or form that she's disavowed the work. And especially because at this point, Dr. Uh, Grim Jim has said that he seems to be of the knowledge that Dr. Cleo Weissman never intended the article to ever go up. He said that as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, so, I, I think we have we can have a supposition that Claire Weissman didn't want the, the article to remain or something like that. But we can't even be really sure of that, can we? Because um, we don't know. We don't know who put up the, the article on Medium. We don't know who took who took it down. Right. Uh, right. We don't know if Claire Weissman is even aware that this article exists technically. Right. Like, we're not sure about that. Right. But we don't but know that, if Claire Weissman is alive, to be honest. Not sure. But but I would say is that anyone who's not sure of those things really is is of is has a moral and ethical charge not to have the article up and not to be publishing it. Well, I've got I've I got a question. Yeah, I got a, I got a question for you as uh, as a lawyer that you might be able to answer in the context of American jurisprudence. I, I may or I may or may not, and I may refrain from answering that okay, because as a lawyer, you I can't you say, but, but, you but, no, but you, can, you hit me with it. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Right, right? But give, so. if Cleo wrote this herself, put it up, right? We can agree that there are ethical violations that that she would have committed. Um, that could threaten her license as a, as a psychotherapist, for example, right? But let's say that she didn't write it. She had nothing, like she, she might've done the research or something, but let's say that she had no knowledge that this article was written and then published. Um, someone published it using her name. That person would obviously be very liable, wouldn't they, to, to if, if, if Cleo Weissman or her estate were to know about it and, uh, and make some kind of a complaint. Am I right? You know, it, re it really would depend on it. Depend on the fact when I'm when I've played this this scenario out through in my mind, and this is not legal advice. This is just you know really ballpark speculation. You know, I've thought about this. I think you know this is why I've always you know been playing around with the notion that this that this woman might be might have passed away because people keep on talking about cancer, and people keep on talking about someone keeps on talking to someone about this advanced cancer um, is the notion that people may have been aware of this woman, been aware of this woman's research and been aware of this woman's condition. And then having learned about her passing away may have come up with some sort of master plan to say, if we put this thing up and get this thing down and cover our tracks, you know, you can't defame. They may have had some sort of concept of not being able to defame the dead or you know we this woman in the article is identified as as a lesbian 
maybe they knew that she was without you know heirs or assigns or you know that there might not have been an estate or something that they thought that they had some sort of master plan or something i don't know Im- you know impersonating people is is uh, you know a touchy legal le- legal subject I, I have a feeling that, that that laws were most likely broken whether or not it, it would be a high ranking thing that you know that that you know the fbi or someone would be you know you know a high priority thing for them I, I, I couldn't speculate. I think, you know, right. someone would have to be specialized. But if there is, you know, living relatives, you know, mother or father out there who, who become aware of this, or if the person, Dr. Cleo Weissman, is actually alive and is not aware of this and then finds out that, that something was done, you know, with her name, absolutely. I think that there's, there's you know, this is, that's, that's identity theft. And I think that that's going to be identity theft of, of a very high caliber. I mean, what the what the consequences would be, I couldn't I couldn't begin to speculate, but I think it would be a big deal. But because I think it would be a big deal, and I think that most people would know and understand it was a big deal, is why I've always come around to the notion that 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 someone probably was you know waiting in the wings for news of something to which is why we're seeing such a people saying like I was talked to in 2021 and then all of a sudden this article is coming out now um you know but but again that's all that's like what I that's not just speculation that is like you know you know monkey powered rocket car you know flying across the you know salt flats you know and in you know speculation you know that is uh, that is not an accusation that is not that is that is like fly me to the moon speculation i have no idea what no one knows what's going on i mean we know that this that this woman you know existed but like that's what i'm saying people are saying we know this is a real woman we know this person is real yeah but this person is real in a like a very strange place i mean i am not the only one that has been putting this woman's name into multiple search engines and and coming up with you know, look, you can do searches of databases for licensed physicians in Oregon, and you're going to find out that something's not adding up. You yeah. know, this is. Yeah, it's, I, mean, it's I haven't found anything that post dates 2022, you know, because I did yeah, a little no, bit. Th- this is, this, th- this is, you know, there, there's, you know, there's something really, there's some, there's something here. And also, I got to tell you something. Grim Jim has said things like, I've contacted, you know, various media places and they're saying there's no story here and i'm telling i'm you know I'm, I'm whispering in my head if you're thinking that they're just dropping the story and they don't think that there's any story there and there's nothing happening no they're saying there's nothing they're, they're, they're knowing there's a story there and they're thinking the story is oh the story is there's something weird here and we're you know we're just telling you that we're not going there right now but they're absolutely looking for dr cleo weissman possibly yeah, yeah. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. Why not? Because you know, if you're a reporter, you follow up on dead leads all the time. You follow up on leads that go. You waste your time on dead leads all the time. Like you know, look, leads go nowhere all the time. But you just follow up on them. You burn phone. You know, you burn the phone all the time. Going this, going this. You don't think that 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 reporters at Polygon are gonna figure out? You know, that don't don't spend time on X and don't spend a lot of time on you know, Twitter and don't spend, no, Twitter, don't spend time on Reddit and go, okay, well, mm-hmm. look, I'll call the University of Nevada. I'll, okay, I'll call mm-hmm. Oregon or I'll call this or I'll do that. They'll, you know, they'll, or maybe not, or maybe, you know, we're just, you know, the, the people obsessed enough to go, oh, maybe there's something here. Look, there's, there's, if there's 9,000 views for Neckbeardia and there's 9,000 views for Grim Jim, and there's 2,000 views over here and 2,000 views over here. You got to figure that. Look, Linda Codega's got to be doing something today. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. Well, uh, let me let me jump into the some of the chat here so we catch up a bit. Uh, Diversity and Dragon said, uh, "Lol, just super chatted pundit to get him to make someone a mod, and it's lost somewhere in the ether between here and South America." Yeah, I saw no super chat, but. All right. If, if you guys want to try to send me super chats, see if I get them. <laughs> Diversity and Dragons, I've made you a moderator now because that was a good idea. It's really weird. I've never had a. I'm, this is going on here because uh, you know I've done a lot of live streams and I've never had a whole bunch of 
spam accounts showing up and posting nonsense. So I'm guessing that there's some people that didn't want to to have this live stream happening and are now just trying to to troll the the live chat. It's um, it's I'm, I'm virally infected. It's you know what I mean. Yeah. It's the ghost of William S. Burroughs following me around. <laughs> Um, let's see what else it says. Dice Tail says, it seems on some level there was unacceptable behavior by people. The kind of language and behavior surrounding this is mean and unkind. There's no excuse for the vituperation. Okay. Uh, Gringo G, no, Gringrog, sorry, said, I just watched Raji's video about it. It was awesome. And he kept all his clothes on. So bonus points all around. Yeah, that's a, that's a surprising twist for one of Raji's videos, you know. Um, Still, I know it says diversity and dragons is an all right psychopath. Um, uh, let's see what else. Um, Space Roadie says, what is Chanter written? I, I don't know if you have actually written any RPG products yet. No, I'm, I'm, I'm the one guy. Right. Yeah, see, normally, because my I think some of my 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 viewers might be a little bit confused because I, I do have guests that come on like inappropriate characters or something like that. You're actually the first person I've ever had as a guest on my channel on one of my live streams. But uh, you know, on inappropriate characters and things like that, I usually have people who are who are who produce game products or very well known um YouTubers like Diversity and Dragons or something like that. But in this case, you got an instant golden ticket to be on my channel just because you're the one guy on the other side who was like looking for someone to debate, you know. And it's like I said, it's been ages since that happened. And, and uh, for what it's for what for what it's worth, if you go to my main channel, CW Chanter, I do have just south of five thousand subscribers there, and I used to have more than five thousand subscribers. So it's not like I'm an unknown quality on YouTube. So you don't have to feel like you got punked by some liberal <laughs> nobody. Just has no, like no, I don't no, feel no that way. Yeah, I knew I knew what I was getting into. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. You know, the opportunity to have a debate is something that I I have sorely missed as the left has stopped wanting to have debates. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, I have Braille says, of course, people in TTRPGs are being awful to each other and making false accusations. They're woke. That's like saying aerobic fans are wearing leotards and going for a run. Um, Zoe, sorry, Joe Zimaitis says, James Raji, thank you for Carcosa. I can't find anything on G, G. McKinney. Um, Tolkien study says, I think that's one of your fans, says EJ Chanter. Yeah. Looks like the devil from the tarot. <laughs> um, it's just the beard. Um, just the, that, that's what you think. L says, what about Olivia Hill's comments and tweets on the article, Pundit? Well, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of get into that in a bit, but it, it is funny. It's like old, old school day or something, because like most of the people, one of the interesting things about this article is that most of the people who are exposed in this article are people who were incredibly influential back in the days where most of the tabletop RPG conversation was happening on Google plus they had enormous power. I mean, they literally, I mean, they canceled Grim Jim, they canceled, uh, Zach, you know, uh, a, a couple of years later. Um, they they tried very, very hard to destroy um, Lamentations of the Flame Princess as a company. They went after me, but they couldn't touch me. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, and then they all vanished, basically, because they're, you know, th they were replaced by other people who are in some ways worse that, that were the people who, because all of them were huge, um, they were huge, boosters of fourth edition because fourth edition D, D was inspired by story gaming theory and they hated fifth edition I, you're the only guy i've ever heard say that you know i've always heard people everyone say that that fourth edition is basically a world of warcraft it's know, not a tabletop battle simulator you're the only person i've ever heard it i almost fell out of my chair i was watching your live chat and you said that it was a story story game yeah, well, it's not a story game. It's based on the GNS theory um, that, that was popular on in The Forge, which was the creator of story games, which argues that RPGs that try to do everything are incoherent. So an RPG should only do one thing, which is either to like tell a story or to be a war game, basically, or to um, be like a kind of travel log in an open world, right? And so that was the theory that was applied to fourth edition. It was saying, let's focus it on being 
this kind of game that's focused on just the game is the gamest aspects of it is what they called it, right? And that's why right. I predicted when 4E came out that it would lose two thirds of its market value, right? And it did. And that's why I was hired as a consultant on fifth edition. And fifth edition is based on the opposite of that, on my theories, you know? So that's why it became such a success. Okay, we got a super chat here from Charles Anderson for $5. So the super chats do work. I don't know what the hell happened to that one that, that Double D sent. And his uh, his super chat is asking um, is asking you, Chanter, for tabletop RPGs. What is your preferred genre? You know, I mean, like as far as like you know, like high fantasy or science fiction or anything yeah, like I that. I would say, I mean, like, what what are what are the RPGs you you enjoy playing? Well, I mean, like I I'm one of these things. Like I'm I'm an avid collector of TTRPGs, so I really just you know I I'm always going for, and I'm really I I consider myself kind of like it's almost like a historian kind of aspect of it. So I really. My whole thing is I'm I've, I'm very into this thing about uh, nostalgia loops and really thinking about the way that uh, time and cycles uh, reiterate upon themselves and how things come back. So I've been really into for the last couple of years thinking about how things you know come back. So like in for 2023, I've been looking a lot at like uh, you know 3.5 and thinking about how uh, 2003, you know, was coming back. So I spent a lot of time thinking about the, you know, the D20 system and stuff and how that was. So I was looking a lot at, you know, uh, Dungeons and Dragons 2.0 and, uh, you know, three po third edition and 3.5. Uh, but I, you know, I've been really into also looking at otherwise, you know, the cipher system. I'm a huge fan of Monty Cook and, you know, uh, you know, his games. So I've been, I, I look a lot at like, uh, you know, the Cypher System games that, that I like, like Numenera yeah, and, and the, the Strange, you know, because I, I just liked the way that, um, that that stuff ended up playing into kind of, you know, my theories about um, genres and stuff, intermixing and layers of time, you know, interacting with each other. It just kind of worked because that stuff came out in 2013, which was like 10 years, you know, ago last year and stuff. And The Strange came out in 2014. Uh, but late, lately, I've been looking a lot at, for whatever reason, Pathfinder uh, for Savage Worlds. That's what I've been looking at a lot. And I've been, you know, looking at that stuff. Interesting stuff. It's just, you know, stuff like that. But I, I tend to, you know, go around a lot. I don't really like have favorites. I really study things and I'm really also a lot of times spending times thinking about how things work historically, you know, so I'm, I'm looking at now, like thinking a lot about how the 10th anniversary of fifth edition is going to be coming around and how that interacts with the 50th anniversary of Dungeons and Dragons and how all these things are kind of culminating. And I, I look a lot at Dungeons and Dragons because it is, this kind of nostalgia loop machine, how it's kind of become this perennial entity. And despite the fact that these editions are really completely separate games, yet this meta concept of Dungeons and Dragons ties it all in together. It's like Disney in a lot of ways. It's this, it's like baseball in America. It's just this cultural thing and how you, people can't really shake it and how universally it's always been this number one kind of thing. And no matter how people can debate that, even when it's can at times be the most inferior thing on the block yet, you can tell people you'd be better off playing this game. You'd be better off playing this game. People won't stop playing the thing with the brand name on it that says this thing. And yeah. it is what it is. And and it becomes the everything, the debates around Hasbro, the debates around Wizards of the Coast and the history of the different people and the different designers and how the different designers come in and out. Like we mentioned the name Monty Cook. You can name, you know, guys like, you know, uh, you know, Jonathan Tweet, you know, and stuff. I you're, you know, it might make your head explode because I know you hate storytelling games, but I've been looking a lot at Everway, you know what I mean? And uh because I like tarot cards. I'm really into tarot cards and stuff. So, but you know, that people might be into that or not into that. It is what it is. All right. So we got another super chat from Diversity and Dragons for $5. He says, Oh, I guess it does work. <laughs> All right. Um, 
from from L, he says, does this mean that Justin Alexander can be charged with defaming the dead Janelle Jacquez for his publisher causing Xandering the Dragon? Um, for those of you who aren't aware of this, Justin Alexander, the, the Alexandrian, who is an absolute piece of human garbage, uh, had um, he's he's been one of these he's one of these people he could have been in this article right like he has for years made the really? completely unfounded accusation that I am a self avowed white supremacist you know uh, which I am not and that's all it takes to break that claim right um, and uh, and you know he's just he's just trash and and now he's been caught in his own little scandal because uh, you know he had long ago done a, a blog entry uh, praising uh, Jacquet's work in the Caverns of Thracia and talked about Jacqueting the dungeon. But uh, as soon as Jacquet died, um, he changed that term to Xandering the dungeon as if naming it after himself. And he went even back to the original blog post and changed it to be about himself. So I don't think he can be charged with defamation, but I do think that you know, he is essentially engaging in the erasure of a trans person, which is in his neck of the woods a horrific crime to commit, right? So I think everybody should 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 take note of that anytime they cross paths with the Alexandrian and point out that he is he's a transphobe turf engaged in the erasure of a trans of a deceased trans person who was in fact a, a huge contributor to the hobby. Oh, another super chat from Zen Gunman. I came here expecting a train wreck, and I'm glad to have been proven wrong. Kudos to you both. Also, R.I.P. Janelle, the hood lost a real one. Well, Jack Hayes was enormously influential in a lot of early D&D works, that's for sure. And I, I, guess it's, 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 I don't mean to interrupt you, but it's got, it, had nothing, it, will, it would have nothing to do with being, you know, like, you know, a uh, turf, you know, it would have nothing to do with, you know, uh, you know. You know, being, uh, you know, a feminist only, you know, biological feminist only you know, uh, anything like that. But I mean, I don't really know if that's anything to do. what he did was just, you know, uh, you know, in that, in extremely poor taste. And I think that his, his argument that, that his, uh, his, uh, publishers leaned on him to do it, I think, you know, holds no water because we all know that, you know, people publish, you know, chess books, people publish, you know, books on card games and stuff and they, ample yeah. reference to historical plays that contain the names of past players that, you know, contain the names and references to older players and stuff. Mm -hmm. So the notion that he couldn't have called it what Jack Quasi in the dungeon, yeah. you know, yeah. and kept that and name is like, ridiculous. His, uh, Jacquet's widow has come out and said it, it should still be called Jacquet's in the dungeon, right? right. So yeah, he's, he's done. Yeah, that guy's done, I think. I'm sorry, but, you know, he is finished. Um, Tolkien study says, I want to read the invisible college. All right. Publishing here for the, uh, pu uh, publicizing the invisible college here. It's a fantastic game. If you want a modern occultism game that you can run in many different ways, you know, you can run it as a kind of secret agent sort of game. You can run it as an investigative game and it doesn't have like almost all modern occult games are just Cthulhu mythos stuff. And that's so overdone. You know, this is based on like actual, historical sources of magic and things like that, you know, Goetic demons and the Enochians and, and even all of the weird secret societies that are in the game are at least inspired by some real life element, though most of them are fairly exaggerated for obvious reasons. So be sure to check that out, The Invisible College. You can get that on drive through or Amazon. Um, so yeah, Tolkien, it is on Amazon. You can get it on Amazon. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, oh, uh, Diversity and Dragon says, being called an outright psychopath from a try-hard loser like Elle is a badge of honor. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Um, Scott Becker says, you would think someone would have done background checks to find relatives and track this down. I'm guessing about Cleo Wiseman. Well, I'm, I'm guessing that, like, that's the thing. Inevitably, somebody's going to do that. Right. And then, oh, yeah. and then we'll know, right? Like, I mean, at first when this came out, some people were saying, well, the audios are just AI. But then some of the people that were actually targeted by this article uh, jumped out and admitted that they did the audios. They claimed that, you know, they were in some way tricked into doing it, but they they all admitted that it was, well, not all of them, but enough of them that it's pretty obvious that it, that, it, that they were real, you know, uh, admitted right. that it was true. 
But I mean, look, I mean, I, I got to tell you something in regards to the audio. I mean, people keep on saying that this audio is like some smoking gun stuff. Yeah, I was listening to the audio before and I took notes. This audio, people are saying that the, the people go and saying like we got this audio of people admitting to this stuff. I, I, I took notes in all the audio segments. I mean, these audio, it's like it, they're, they're nothing burgers. I mean, you have one person. The most thing that I think you could say is you've got one person saying something that it sounds legitimately kind of really bad. This Fiona guy, Fiona Geist, who says that, you know, this you know, pretty much damning statement about her, where she says that she's, you know, was going to go after, you know, uh, James Raggy and like, you know, buy his stuff wholesale at his, you know, when he goes bankrupt at his estate or whatever. Well, Fiona, that, you know, so there, like, that's Fiona Geist. And what, Fiona I don't Geist. Know, know her from Adam, you know, yeah. that, that, Fiona, that's Fiona her admitting Geist. to that. Back in but the Google else, Plus days. It's just people saying, you know, you got people gossiping. Yeah. Even an anonymous person describing something that's just basically an innocuous statement about online behavior. You have Chris McDowell who says that basically, you know, I guess technically the way we change the rules allowed lying to the letter of law, you know, but it doesn't sound like he's... People well, I'm going to talk more about that later because that's yeah, the yeah. most genuine statement of all, right? But anyways, um, Fiona Geist is someone who back in the Google Plus days... Um, openly threatened to strangle me with piano wire. Okay, so this is the level of of aggressiveness that these people have, right? Um, is she real they, tough. Is she real tough broad? Well, Fiona Geist is, is a trans person. Let's put it that way. Um, is she real tough broad? Well, pretends to be online anyway. Um, yeah, but, well, but broad is a term that you have to take with a little bit of salt there because you know physically th there's a chance of course that fiona geist would have the the physique of a biological male right um well there's a chance but do you I mean did, but i mean do you, what did you ever did you ever see her no of course not i mean that it, it, it's it's tough talk over the internet right but it's right it's the sort of level of aggressiveness that these people have right 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 but what did you actually feel threatened no, I didn't. I mean, I didn't feel threatened right. because it was a whole different continent, right? But right, but, right, yes. But, yeah, but some you know essentially mean, threatening. Like, like, I mean, if let's put it this way: in, in pre-Elon Musk Twitter, and probably still today, um, if somebody, well, the difference is today, if anybody threatened that to somebody else on Twitter, they would be banned from Twitter, right? In the pre-Elon Twitter, if what? somebody on the yeah. right threatened Fiona Geist with that same thing, they would have been banned from Twitter. Fiona Geist probably wouldn't have been, but because Twitter was extremely biased, right? Well, um, let, let me tell you something. Let's say in pre in pre Elon Musk Twitter, right? I have this guy, right? There's a guy on Twitter that is always sent you may have seen him. He's always sending me things like, you're gonna burn in a gas chamber and we're gonna go after your kids and we're gonna put them in the gas chamber with you. And he sends like pornographic, like scrapbook MS Paint images of me with a yarmulke on my head and like a dildo on my butt and all this like crazy stuff. And so, and I sent the complaint, if when I used to, sometimes I'd send the complaint to like pre and post Elon Musk Twitter. And it'd be like, sometimes they'd be like, ah, and sometimes it'd be like, okay, we, we ban him. And then you just come back. You're like, nothing ever happens. Like, you know, so if, like, if you think that like leftists get banned and right people don't, or the right people get banned and left people don't, like, it's a shit show. Like, you know, you get harassed on social media all the time. It's, you know what I mean? So, but, but still, it's like, you know what I mean? Like, tough talk on Twitter. Like, were you threat? Like, did you really feel like you were going to get no, your no, like, butt on the guys? It's, it's that, that what Geist said on Google Plus is an example of, of aggression, but actually, the, the, a whole bunch of other things that Geist and company did. Like, for example, um, intentionally lying about um, about Grim Jim. They they stated repeatedly and and used this to get products of Grim Jim banned and for him to lose jobs. That he was in favor. He had spoken out in favor of rape. You know, of raping women. Right. That and and they all knew this was a lie. On on something awful they were they were laughing about it they were like yeah of course it's alive but we're going to keep telling it until they get rid of this guy right like that's that's the problem it's just that, yeah. yeah but i mean like, but yeah one thing like you know like 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 i'm not saying like and i don't need to make light of it like you know first i mean well the thing like the thing is this like i always say this is that, like you know i mean like the internet is like a full contact sport we wish it wasn't but it is like whatever like if grim jim had people do an organized thing. Like I said, people have 
did organize campaigns to try and get BS complaints sent to the New Jersey State Bar Association about me. So I know what it's like to be targeted and to be harassed. And it sucks. It really does. You know what I mean? But it's just, you know, sometimes it's the price of doing business. I don't know what happened to Grim Jim. You know, I really don't. And, you know, if people, like, know the details and can fill me in, you know what I mean? Like, then I would know. You know what I mean? But it's like, like you know, Fiona guy's threatening to, to strangle with the piano wire. It's like, it's you know what I mean? Like a trans gal threatening to, threaten you to strangle with the piano, piano wire. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, it's the internet. What do you, what do you want? You know, someone threatened to strangle yeah. with the piano wire. But it it's still beats the character, doesn't it? I mean, and, and besides this, Again, like what the, the kind of harassment that they undertook against us during Consultant Gate um, was basically months long, right? It lasted three, four months of daily constant brigading, right? But this is where they would get, you know, hundreds of accounts, either alt accounts or just their little followers that would just right. constantly be on the attack. They would have, they, they made petitions calling for us to be banned from points of sale, all of these sorts of things. Yeah. With the intention, their intention was to bankrupt us and to also force us off the internet and possibly to get us to kill ourselves, you know. Um, and yeah. in Grimpian's case, they came pretty close, apparently, right? Like, that's yeah. that's how bad that's it was. But yeah. hang on, we've got another super chat. we got to give a bit of priority to this. Charles Anderson says, for both of you, do you go straight to the dungeon or is the dungeon the final act of a journey? I can let you go first on that one, if you like. You don't go straight to the dungeon. I mean, it's a labyrinth. You gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta get to where you're going. I mean, I just, I just travel. I, you know, I, I don't decide where I'm going. I go on the journey. Okay. You find yourself where you find yourself. You know what I mean? So it's a quest. For my part, Charles, I'm guessing you're not too familiar with my product. So, um, my games are very focused on kind of a historical authenticity. So, you know, most of my games anyway. So like Lion and Dragon is basically uh, old school Dungeons and Dragons um, based game that is that, that has the crazy premise of what if D&D was actually based on medieval history, myth and legend instead of being based on like novels from the 1950s to the 1970s, right? and some TV shows, right? <laughs> Things like that, right? So I, my, my motto is, you haven't actually played medieval fantasy until you've played Lion and Dragon, right? And so there, dungeons are, are it's not, there aren't places to go there. You go off into the wilderlands, you might go to ruins, you might go to caves and mines. There might even be something that looks very similar to a dungeon. But a lot of the play that I run is play that isn't especially uh, focused on dungeon crawling. And my settings, like Dark Albion, which is basically set in a, a medieval authentic version of England during the War of the Roses, but one that's based on how the people themselves imagined the world to work. So miracles and magic and monsters do exist. They're just medieval miracles, magic and monsters. Or Sword and Caravan, which is set during the Third Crusade and uh, traveling along the Silk Road. A lot of them are based on um sometimes like you can run them in different ways you can be a group of adventurers but you can also be a group of travelers or you can be a group of um of, of people fighting in the crusades or people that are at a royal court engaging in all kinds of you know um game of thrones type scheming and things like that so dungeons are not something i emphasize as much as a lot of other osr designers you know um, I don't hate dungeons. I like them a lot. I'm running a camp. One of my four campaigns right now is uh, Tonisborg, which is one of the oldest dungeons ever made. It was made before D&D was actually published. And I'm having an amazing time running it. It's just tons of fun. But uh, I'm definitely not a straight to the dungeon DM in terms of my campaigns. <laughs> so there you go. Um, Let's see what else we've got here, uh, if there's any other comments, and then after that we'll continue. But I want to try to catch up at least a little, or else we'll be help hopelessly behind. Um, yeah, Overkill Joe says, ask Jeremy from the quartering how that goes. He was assaulted for real. That's right. It was one of these same people at Gen Con, you know, um, this guy called Fantastic Matt, who is part of that same friend group with all these people that literally came up to Jeremy in a bar and started beating the crap out of him, you know? And then yeah, what gets, happened? Jeremy gets slapped once and go down. Like, I don't get you know, beating the crap out of him. You know, like, he was, he was by, a couple of times and then he backed away and some other people got between them. 
But as a result of this, what happened? Gen Con banned Jeremy for life for being assaulted. You know, like that's that's also part of the part of this is also the systemic injustice of the leftist control over some of the institutions of the hobby, right? Where they're the 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 retribution that they do. Don't, don't get your is, ass kicked by a trans woman. You know what I mean? Like yeah, fight back. You know what I mean? Do better. You know what I mean? Like you know, it's just or be. Hey, I don't know if it's leftist. Hey, listen, I make light. Yeah, I make light, but. He did get his ass kicked by a trans woman. The point is, if people, if the tables are turned, right, and let's say, I don't know, somebody from the like, Avenger Satanist punches someone out, you know, um, then uh, that they, will be canceled forever, right? These people, nothing happens to them. They just get to keep doing what they're doing, right? And that's part of why Grim Jim is so pissed off at them, right? Because they are part of a little cabal that have all the, the in-group, the friendships that are that are connections, um, and allow them to act with impunity to do things that, on the other side, would never be allowed. Right. Well, look. I mean, look. Donald Trump was president for four years. You know what I mean. George a., George W. Bush was president for eight. You know, Ronald Reagan was. But you know what I mean. Like, look. I mean, it's not like leftists are in control of everything. You no, know, but it's, over the last twenty years, the left, the uh, specifically the anti-liberal left, that is to say, anti-classical liberal values, has the taken over left. all the institutions. Yeah, the anti, you know, classical. I'm talking about classic seventeenth uh, century liberalism, right? The the the, 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 the idea of, freedom, of the speech, kind of liberal, the equality of all people. Um, you know, the 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 um, the idea of being merit, a meritocracy rather than based on racial qualities or things like that. All of that has gone out the window for these people. And the reason, you know, the reason Harvard is allowing people to make chants calling for the genocide of Jews on in their quad is because those people have taken over the institutions. Who's good? Wait, you're allowed to call for the genocide. I'm a, I'm a, listen, I don't, I don't know if that's happening. But look, I mean, here's the thing. Well, you know, they lost their job over it, right? I mean, that really? and massive, massive plagiarism, but still, you know. Look, I got to tell you something. Unfortunately, here's where we've, where we, where we've reached the point in, 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 in our society. And it's like kind of like West, it's like in America and Canada and in, in Great Britain, you know, in Germany and France. We reached a, almost like a, point, a post-truth society where the divide between people has become so great where we've become so addicted to spin, where we can look at the same information, we can come to, to such different conclusions, it's like surreal. You know, I'm, I'm half Jewish and half Puerto Rican, I, but I was raised, you know, basically culturally Jew. But I can tell you, even as a Jew, I, I look at Israel and I can identify it as an apartheid state. Oh, I shit, you're valid- <laughs> Look, it is what it is. You, you you can disagree with me and we can have a discussion about it. Okay. But I can have, it like, I, can... I don't want to, to go off completely on a on a rail, right? But let me let me make to you one simple point, right? There are two million Muslim Arabs who are citizens of Israel. And as citizens of Israel, they have more rights than any Muslim in any other country in the Middle East has in their country. There's no other country where a citizen of that country has more rights than what an an Israeli Arab Muslim citizen of Israel has in Israel. So how can you say that's the apartheid state? Well, I say, I, I say that Israel is an apartheid state because of its, treat, its treatment of, of the citizens, of, you know, the Palestinians and in Gaza and the, the inability of them to access water and supplies and medical care. And this they've, was been given, before October they've, been, they've been given autonomy since 2005 and, and they were given all the supplies to have water systems and they used it to make pipe bombs and underground tunnels for terrorists. But hey, okay, let's not well, let's not jump into that. Yeah, we can have we'll, a we'll, debate we'll on that some other time. For another time. We'll table that. Yeah, if you want, time. you can one of these days you can invite me to your channel. We can debate the, sure, the, no the war in Israel right now. But let's not get out of out of hand here because today we're going to be talking about games. So um let me just check one just just see if I'm cut yeah I'm pretty much caught up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um so Let's let's carry on now. And I think the next thing that w- might be useful before we proceed to any of the other points is to see if there are points in which we can both agree about this article. OK, so I, I, there's a large number of them because I watched your live stream and, and yeah. I think that, you know, there's a large I think, part. Of them. 
So I'm going to list some out to you and you can tell me whether you're in agreement or if you're not and, and in what way you would disagree, right? So sure, sure. Um, for starters, we can agree that the audios are not artificial, artificially produced, they're not AI, right? And that the people who were interviewed were the actual people that are named in the article. Um, we, but maybe we can't be 100% sure that it was actually Cleo who was speaking to them, but, but everything and everything else about those audios, we can agree that the audios are in fact real. Are you in agreement? I, I have heard enough people come forward and kind of state that they were interviewed. I have not heard anyone that come forward and say and deny that they were that they were interviewed. The people that, you know, I would expect to come forward and say that they were denied their their presence, you know, have not. Olivia Hill certainly has, has come forward and said that that she, you know, you know, testify that, that the interviews happen. So, and I know that other people have come forward. I don't think that there's any argument to be, you know, really had about, about the, about the audio. Oh, okay. Though I would, say, I would say that there are people that are kind of basically acting like these audios are, are kind of like these, these kind of dramatic things. I will say this, given the fact that there's real, that I have real questions about the, um, the, the provenance of the article and the, the provenance of the content of the article, I wouldn't go so far as to say, because there are these audio clips, therefore we can make the, the, the connection that the, the quotes contained within the article are genuine as well. Because obviously if someone wanted to establish fake hmm. words, they could have audio and then say, there's also these quotes. Yeah, that's, you know, that's interesting. You could be right. You could be right. But I mean, I've looked at some of the people here, Patrick Stewart and Olivia Hill and Fiona Geist and the comments that they've made. And I didn't see that in any of them. They said, oh, they said they quoted this, but it, but I never said that. Right. So that, that would seem yeah. to me to suggest that the quotes were also authentic. Right. And they probably wouldn't claim that they weren't because there's probably also audio of those quotes because uh, presumably Cleo Weissman taped all of it. Right. Because it was it was apparently all you know uh, audio interviews that that were done right, so I, I would suspect that the yeah. quotes are real, but it is possible that they right. might not be, and and that just right. nobody thought of complaining about that yet. Um, yeah, and also it's like you know we we have to know that you know just because someone didn't you know go through and like I think you just said like just because someone didn't you know specify th these quotes weren't you know part of it or these quotes weren't genuine or I didn't say this or I didn't say that doesn't mean you know, everything. And, and also not everyone who has, you know, was recorded. And also some of these things were anonymous and, you know, and some of these, some of this article content is not supported by audio. You know, look, there's only 14 minutes of audio and it's a huge article. It is. Yeah. So on, on that subject, the next thing that I would point out would be um, that in the article, uh, the, the title itself is presented as if it was the product of, a, of academic scholarship. And then the person who wrote the beginning of the article lists the um, alleged, let's say, uh, qualifications. Some of them are, are, are confirmed that Cleo Wiseman, in fact, has these qualifications anyways, um, of, uh, as an academic, but that the article itself I mean, I'm speaking as an academic, you know, history and, and comparative studies. Um, it, it is not an academic article in any way, shape or form. It's an opinion piece, basically, with with some evidence, but it's not it's not academic evidence. It's not given proper citation and, and so on and so forth. Right. So the, the article tries to put on the veneer of legitimacy by quoting <coughs> um, academic credentials, but it's not itself an academic work. You'd agree with that? Oh, I'd absolutely agree with that. I mean, it is it is it is a bizarre amalgam of I don't know what. And like that that's part of the problem is that that's what makes it look so suspicious to me is because there's this obvious attempt to give it this kind of bona fides to make it look like something, and then what it's propping up is this, you know, like you said, hey, you know, you know, basically a hagiography of uh, of this individual that is who he is. You know, it is what it is. Right. So getting on to that point, um, it is my impression, likewise, one of the tech, one of the skills that a, a historian has is textual study and interpretation. And it strikes me 
that there is a, a clear breach in the article between the first 20% and the remaining 80%, and that it is sufficiently different in its writing that it is, I can't say with any kind of certainty, I don't have any proof, but that they, they would, it would, to me, indicate that there was multiple authorship or very heavy editing of, of sections, and that specifically the first 20% and the, the latter 80% have significant um, differences in style and and um, and writing structure. Would you would you agree with that? There, there, well, the, I, I mean, I, I definitely sense you know definitely there's obviously a shift. I mean, there's almost there's like an intro. There's it's it, there's like a there's like a kind of a break where it's it, it kind of shifts like in tone and it's almost a setup. There's also this this kind of this introduction of the you know kind of a breathless tone of you know pause when. You have to give pause, give me a break while I pause here. I'm getting a bit emotional. Like there's just this 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 strange shift. So I, I do agree. I, I mean, I don't have the same background as as you do, so I, I wouldn't be able to testify to the same kind of um, you know breakdown. But it, it just look, it's just it does this different thing. The mm -hmm. the citation to uh, studies, you know, kind of end, and it just it does this different thing. Uh, yeah. You know, and it is what it is. In the chat, Scott Becker says, compare it with her other works. There's a big difference. I haven't read any of her academic papers, but I, I would point out that that by itself isn't absolute proof of anything either, though, because uh, a lot of people who are academics will write an academic paper in one way and they will, will write something that isn't academic in another way, in spite of making these academic claims in the article, this is not an academic paper, right? And I know, for example, if I'm writing an academic essay, the way I write will look very different than the way my writing looks like in my RPG books or, or on Twitter or something like that, you know? So um, that, that, that could be a sign of different authorship, but it, it isn't absolutely that, because sometimes people are radically different in stuff that they write as academics versus stuff they write that isn't academic, right? Um, and well, I think we can both also agree that the section uh, of the first part of the text is takes a highly critical eye of the subjects that it's looking at. And then the latter part, the, 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 the remaining 80%, the hagiography of Zach Smith, takes a remarkably uncritical and basically propagandistic approach to Zach. Are we are we it, in agreement I mean, on that? Yeah, no, I mean it, the, the, this is this is part of the thing that 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 makes me say that there's no way that this was written by, you know, a licensed, you know, psychotherapist, because not only that's also the part where we get this introduction of this where where we get a lot of the key lapses and, you know, professional, you know, professionalism and the the breaches of professional conduct that the most egregious ones there's that's where we have the um the 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 diagnosis shaming where we have also that's you know the the, the ethical violation of, of diagnosing someone who is not your patient and then saying as then extrapolating out and then saying as a result of that diagnosis this person's accusations are not to be believed we're not as likely to have merit or, or veracity, which is not true. It's actually even not true. You know, if, if, if you've been diagnosed with bipolar, there's no reason why your behavior should would, would indicate to anybody that you would, you know, be less likely to believe in these sort of charges. And, and you would, you know, if someone made rose that wrote, you know, raised that in a court of law, it would be stricken. You know what I mean? It would be, it's, it's just, it's just not, you know, worthy of, of a person to say. And that's why I say it's like that. Why would the, why would a person commit that to paper, let alone let it be published at all? I mean, it's just, it's just bizarre, but you could imagine someone with an ax to grind against another party writing it in somebody else's name. It's just weird. And then yeah. you get into the, the, the kind of the diagnosis uh, comparison, but I've also diagnosed this other person and they're, fit as a fiddle, you know, totally perfect, absolutely great, except for the possibility that maybe they, they're depressed over this, you know, hellscape they've been put through by these other, you know, egregious actors, you know yeah. what I mean? Who are worse mm -hmm. than any of the hardened criminals that I've ever seen, who have at least had reasons for the things that they've done. 
which is something insane for a licensed psychotherapist to say. Oh, really? You dealt with hardened criminals in maximum security prisons, but you never dealt with anyone with narc- with severe narcissistic personality trait disorders or someone no. with psychopathy who had absolutely no reason. It is crazy, but I mean, an even crazier thing for Cleo Weissman to say, if it was her own words, is even though I haven't actually ever met physically with this person, Mandy Morbid, I will diagnose her, you know, Zach Zach, I will diagnose her with these various psychopathies and, and claim that that's my clinical diagnosis as a psychotherapist. And likewise, I will analyze Zach and determine that he is a completely sane individual. You know, like, Absolutely. This, this, Absolutely. This is a, I mean, I've it's spoken just, to friends of mine. I'm not a psychologist, but I've spoken to friends of mine who are psychologists. And it, at least in the jurisdictions, I, don't, I didn't speak with anyone who's in Oregon, which is, I believe, the last known address of Cleo Weisman, but it's presumably the same in most places that saying something like that is the sort of thing that would bring you up before a board and get your license removed, right? Like there's a case right now that happened with, um, with uh, th- that, that this is basically what they're trying to get Jordan Peterson on, right? That, that they're claiming that, that comments he made on Twitter could be interpreted as, as making a diagnosis of someone online that he, that he didn't have as a client or something like that, right? And that's why they want to send him to a re-education camp. So, he can keep his license, you know. So, like, this is this is misconduct, according to you know most colleges of of psychology, you know. Right, and and, mm-hmm. and it wouldn't even be Oregon because at the time that these conversations, you know, were supposed to have taken place. Yeah, it might have been in Nevada, been in New York. She would have been like, York, Col- yeah. I think yeah. Columbia or something. Yeah. So yeah. you know, it's just. I mean, it's just it, the whole thing is mad ball. The whole okay, thing, the whole thing is madness. We've got a $2 super chat from Zen Gunman who says, consider that Wiseman may just be very bad at her job. Now, you know, I have considered that. That is certainly possible, right? Because, I mean, if you look at the career of Wiseman, it doesn't look from an academic perspective like a tremendously successful career, right? She was at Columbia and and then leaves Columbia to, to join the... Um, University of Nevada, Reno, the sociology department, but it's there for less than a year. Now, that might be because she gets sick, right? That is one possibility. It also might be that that she got fired or something like that, right? Like that. So, that you know, there are a lot of people who are really bad academics and that end up, you know, teaching at a community college or or just doing something else, you know? So it is, it is theoretically possible still that this was Wiseman and, and that, um, and that Wiseman is just, really unprofessional you know like maybe i don't know i mean I look there's, there's, there's being really bad at your job but there's being bad at your job to the degree that you're willing to you know throw throw it you know throw it all away yeah. i mean look yeah. i mean is it is it possible it is absolutely anything's possible and i, I made this point in one of my earlier videos it, it, during the om shinriko sarin gas attacks in japan one of the people that pierced the one of the bags with an umbrella was a noted and trained heart surgeon. Look, you know, people of academic standing and people who've acquired degrees you can be, think, their yeah. mind can become under the influence of a you know a Svengali or whatever, you know, can do in you know, out of place things. When we do these things, when we do these analysis, all that we're basically, you know looking at is is circumstantial evidence things that make you go huh things that say what what is the what is the more likely scenario that we're dealing with some with a with a paper here that was the the product of an academic or the the, a paper that was you know constructed by someone who was writing under assumed name or stolen name one second here uh diversity and dragons gave me another two dollar uh super chat says gotta go make cal a mod he does a good job all right cal you're now a mod i declare you so there you go. Um, let, me, let me just look at a couple of things being commented on the live chat here. It's a, uh, Overkill Joe says, it's hard to see less things being written without an agenda. Things are being created solely for the message and not about a fun hobby game. Well, but I mean, that's been true since probably since RPGNet started to, to uh, talk about emotional safety back in the early 2000s, you know, and it, it's only gotten worse and worse over time, you know. That there is a lot of political and ideological agenda in in the in the hobby that of people that want to politicize the hobby and cause trouble in that way. 
Uh, Scott Becker says, you'd think she'd show, she being Cleo, I assume, show more self-discipline in protecting herself credential-wise, even if it's written in a more conversational style. Well, yeah, yeah, you would think so, but, uh, you know, as as Chandra points out, sometimes people can can end up getting completely caught up in something else to the point that they they damage their own reputation for it, you know. Um, Charles Anderson says it's because her morality is based on oppressed slash oppressor. Zach was oppressed, so anything he did was okay, and he's a wonderful person. If Zach were classified as an oppressor, that would be different. Well, that, that's an interesting thing to say because, of course, the entire morality of these awful people that Cleo talks about is that critical studies oppressed oppressor mechanic, right? They, they, you know, it's based on on the kind of um, ideological fanaticism of people like Paulo Freire. And the and the philosophical con construction of the postmodernists like Foucault and Derrida, right? That um, you know, all language is warfare. Nothing is actually true. Only semantics are what matter. And and so you must be willing to make any reality that is necessary because again, it's all relativistic. Uh, and and that you can define all interactions of human beings as a form of of oppression, right? That there's that in any interaction, there's one person who is the oppressor and the other one who's the oppressed, you know. Um, and I mean, that is possible that Cleo also might think that way because Cleo starts out the article saying, "Well, you know, I don't care about what all right chuds do with the hobby because we always we already know how awful they are. The 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 thing that terrifies me is how awful we, you know, enlightened progressives are to each other, you know. <laughs> so maybe wait, wait, maybe wait. there is some of that." Where, where do you get that? I mean, I, I mean, look, I mean, there's a lot of this, you know, we, them, these people, the, whoever did these actions are specific people. And I think that we run into a problem where we start acting as though these specific people, it's whether these five, 10, 15, 25 people, and I'm not saying that they, they don't identify as progressives. I'm not saying that they don't identify as leftists. But they're specific actors, and their actions are their actions. These are not the actions of all leftists. This is not, you know, we don't want to well, say I'm, that I'm, five or 10, 15 African Americans do this, that this is how black people act. We don't want to say that if RPG Pundit behaves in this way, that's how this is proof that Freemasons are like this. You know what I mean? Or that, you know, supporters of Bolsonaro are whatever you know what i mean like it is every actor is an individual you know what i mean and you know we you don't whether you know we don't want you know if if we see you know some freakazoid at a trump rally being interviewed that's that individual and we don't want people to start acting like all trump supporters are like that person no you know that person is that person and if you find 15 or 25 of them, that's those 15 or 25 people. And it's still every individual Trump supporter, whether they identify as hashtag MAGA or whatever, those are still independent people. And, you know, these people are, there are 15, five, six people that are talked about in this article. There are 17, whatever number of people there are, they are these people. And people keep on talking about this article like, you see, we knew that these progressive woke people are like this. You wouldn't want people to do that to conservative players, TTRPG players. You wouldn't want people to say, you see these born again, saved by Christ, TTRPG conservative bros are like this. These MAGA right wing culture warriors like Diversity and Dragons and RPG Pundit, they're all a bunch of racist, white power neo-nazi screwballs right you wouldn't want to do that you're individual well, actors right you're the right you know you're the racist i'm nah, teasing you know what i mean I respond to the whole of your argument there but for starters okay. as to where i'm getting this from cleo weisman i'm getting it from her article where she says having just escaped the world of incel culture i wasn't very interested in the kind of people that write shitty messages on twitter because a new star wars character is black in other words I don't care about the, the right-wingers, we know they're awful, right? Um, she says, at first glance, that kind of harasser is well understood by my field and it's just boring, right? Like, like oh, we, we sociologists, we're all, you know, sociologists, by the way, in America, 96% of sociologists identify as far left, right? In terms of political polling, right? 
Um, they do? So they, 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 they already know what those horrible right wingers are like, right? And then she says, "I was more well, interested up in in themselves. themselves. She was she, she was talking yeah. about I don't know." She said, she goes on to say, though, I was more interested in those who, at least on per paper, were the were like the people around me every day and what the industry claims to be creative artists, writers, progressives, feminists, LGBTQ plus folk. I know why right wingers want to hurt di diverse groups of creative yeah. people. I don't yeah, have a handle on why diverse groups of creative that. people hurt each other. You know? So like yeah, she but says, that's also part of, that was also part of the article that now that you reminded me, that was also part of the article that made me think to myself, no one that she didn't write that. No, no, no person, no intelligent licensed psychotherapist wrote that. You wouldn't write that. You wouldn't put that. That's in print. Could, though. a could though. Sociology that that might be the sociology part of her <laughs> academic training. Right? I don't know. This, they're, they're wacky sociologists. Look, I mean, like I said, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a leftist, but I know that when I get canceled, I'll be canceled from the left. Okay. You know what I mean? Now, let's get to the, your argument about um, sure. the the kind of blip, uh, overarching condemnations of right-wingers versus overarching condemnations of left-wingers, right? Sure. Um, obviously, there are some people who are right-wingers that are, let's say, virulent neo-Nazi style anti-Semites or that are, you know, people who want to commit violence against transgendered people or something like that, right? Um, those people are largely marginalized, right? Like the 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 alt-right, as as they've been called, um, are people who don't get even a seat at the table at at legitimate, you know, conservative car. They can't even get into like the Heritage Foundation meetings or things like that, right? None of them are members of Congress. MAGA people are, but MAGA people aren't like that. Well, you saw, a, well, you, well, wait, wait, does Marjorie tell it? Well, you, well, yeah, well, look, I mean, there's, you know, look, there's Lauren Boebert. I mean, like, I'm, look. I mean, what about them? What, what have they done? What have they actually done that is that is that is that level of egregiousness? Well, I mean, look, there's levels, there's different levels of egregiousness. Your Lauren Boebert was giving speeches about erasing the the separation of church and state. And the, 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 the separation between church and state was imaginary and shouldn't really be there. Look, I would talk, Lauren, I could talk Lauren, about that. Lauren Boebert yeah. says that the separation of church and state is meant to prevent the government from inter interfering in religion, but not necessarily to keep religion out of government, right? Now, that's you could argue that you disagree with that, right? But it's not its not that she's saying, I want us to live in, you know, the, the Handmaiden's Tale or something like that, right? Lauren, um, Lauren, Boebert, I, Lauren Boebert specifically said that she thought that the, the, the separate, she was sick and tired of hearing about the separation between church and state. It wasn't meant to be there. It wasn't even in the Constitution. It was just like on some note somewhere. She she mis she said something that was just totally factually inaccurate and not true. Seen some patient for that because that is not what I've seen from her. But okay, you know, I thought you were going to mention Marjorie Taylor Greene and the the Jewish space lasers, which she never said. That was invented by the media, and they oh. just repeated it over and over again until people were convinced that she had said the words Jewish space lasers, and she never ever did. If you look at the article that she wrote originally, it's nowhere in there. You know, what, so what did she actually say? Which well, she, she talked about how there were these forest fires that, that were happening in California that some environmentalists were claiming were proof of climate change, and that in fact they had been they they had later been shown to have been the cause of uh, repeated cases of intent of apparently intentional arson, right? And she commented about well, who would benefit from these kind of forest fires, right? And this would be um, land grabbing corporations and groups, right? And she named several of them, one of which she mentioned was the Rothschild Foundation, right? And she also mentioned that there has been a study in using um, a satellites to um, to be able to, you know, reflective satellites or something like that, which apparently is a real thing, but it's, you know, that, that but it's not used in the way she was speculating that she right. thinks they can use to start fires, right? So they took Rothschild from one section, the word Rothschild, right, right. from one section of the article, and, and space and reflective, reflective satellites from the other, and and space MSNBC lasers, right, said yeah. space Jewish lasers. space lasers. No, 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 yeah. Hey, but you know, and and let's not talk about the fact that that she was talking about this conspiracy theory that that I know because the I follow the conspiracy theory community. So it was the the color blue was supposed to be the one thing that could save you from the space lasers that were the actual cause of the forest fires. So whether they conflated it with the Rothschild 
conspiracy as well, she was still talking about the conspiracy theory about the forest fires being caused by. Yeah, well, but it's a conspiracy theory that is that that you know she gets a little bit wacky with it, but it was actually something that was really happening. There was really arson causing those forest fires, and a lot of the people were caught were environmental activists that were trying to essentially generate a false crisis, right? Like this is how there's a guy who was charged for like 18 of these forest fires that he started all across California, you know? And it's happened not just there, but it happened in Canada too. Space lasers lasers would be crazy, right? Space lasers would be crazy. They were caused by space lasers. That would be crazy. Marjorie, it it takes quite a level of power to to portray Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is probably the most pro-Israel member of Congress right now. Well, remember, don't, don't, don't worry about semi, it. You know, as a, as a Jewish don't, don't worry about anti- Let's leave anti-Semite to the side. Let's just worry about the space lasers, RPG Fondant. No, well, I, I know. Some, sometimes she has some ideas that are off the wall, sure. But, um, yeah, but, but like the point lasers, is, right? let, look, at the crazy worst, talk, right? look at the worst people, right? The worst people in the right. They're all marginal. Now look at the left, right? All of the people on the left who have the most extreme positions, including, again, you know, like Rashida Tlaib, who has openly called for the, the destruction of Israel again. You know, um, well, these people the are in Congress. They control the New York Times. They control the Harvard. They control the, the corporate boards, you know. Um, they have this enormous but, level of power. Now, most people, it's, it, you're right, that most people who identify as Democrats or even as progressives don't agree with most of the supposed woke agenda, right? Like they, if you if you ask them on individual points about it, they say, well, no, I don't think, you know, for example, that that race should be a major factor in hiring in and of itself or something like that, right? They, they won't be in favor of it. But the problem is that the centers of power on the left the most radical groups have managed to get their ways into very high positions and that everybody else on the left is so terrified of being called a racist or a sexist or a homophobe that they do nothing when those people act. And that's exactly what happened in 2014. So I'm sure that I, I suspect that at least half of the role playing hobby votes Democrat if they're Americans or, you know, labor if they're English or something like that. There's probably a fairly close split. I don't think there's more conservatives in the hobby than liberals. Right. But all of the liberals that were on Google Plus and, and on other places later on, like Twitter, um, when these people say incredibly ridiculous things, when, like when they claimed that, you know, Oriental Adventures is racist, you know, and stuff like that, nobody says anything, right? When they say, oh, this person, um, well, because the, this the, guy needs to be canceled, they don't well, speak because they're afraid of being called, of being, you know, and, and in some cases that's happened to people, people who were on the left. And they say, well, hang on, you know, we probably shouldn't, like, destroy this guy's career on completely unfounded information. <laughs> we're, 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 and then that guy is the yeah. too, right? Like, like, fund it. Fund, help me out. Slow down. Slow down, baby. We're moving pretty fast here. You're, you're, you're giving me a lot of stuff. Okay, go we ahead. Went from, we, went from, we went from Rashida Tlaib to that she was I asked you about what did, when did she call for the destruction of Israel. And then all of a sudden there was a list of, of things about the New York Times and stuff and boards and I was like, you didn't I no offense, I you didn't say anything about where I didn't know where she said the destruction of Israel. But then then we're saying a whole bunch of other things. Then we got to Well, you, you want me to give an example of that? Right? Like like they they just, Republican. There, there was just a vote the other day in Congress. Um, okay. That was for a measure to say that anybody who was a member of Hamas or who had participated in the Oc- October 7th attacks, right? We're not talking about any Gazan, right? We're talking about people who were members of Hamas or participated in the October 7 massacre, um, okay. that those people should be automatically blocked from entering the United States. And only two people voted against that motion. And Rashida Tlaib was one of them. And... Um, uh, oh, what's her name? One of the other, another member of the squad, Corey Bush, I think, was the other one that that voted against it. Even AOC okay. voted for him, right? But Tlaib, okay. I mean, Tlaib is is associated with the is, with the Muslim Brotherhood. I mean, she has connections to the Muslim Brotherhood. She's a congressman for Christ's sake. Okay, well, I mean, the Muslim Brotherhood is is a is a huge organ. I mean, that's like saying that you know what I mean, like that you know that someone was a was a was a was connected to like the Knights of Columbus. I mean, it's no, just... no, hang on, 
But the Knights of Columbus do not have it as their, their mission statement to take over every country in the Middle East and turn it into a, uh, a Sharia state, right? Whereas the Muslim Brotherhood does have that as their mission statement. Well, I mean, look, but I mean, it's, I mean, look, I mean, technically, the, the technically, you know, every religion technically wants to convert everybody, but they don't really, in the modern sense, they're, they're not really going to do that. I mean, the well, Muslim the Brotherhood is a mistake. Because you're thing. assuming... You're assuming that people from other cultures think the way we do, right? Like, you've got to remember that the West is one thing and every other society is a different thing, right? Like, to the Muslim world, the Renaissance was just something that happened to other people, right? Like, when Hamas says, we want to kill every Jew from the river to the sea, they really mean that, right? And the problem is that most most Hamas is not every Muslim. Every, every, every person who practices islam is is not a is not, no, a, not every muslim no i'm not saying that but hang on we've got a super chat here that i think is in a bit of a complaint charles anderson said so about the article so all right let's bring it back to the article right my point was to say that in the gaming sphere let's get back to the rpg sphere right Thank you, Charles Anderson, for your $5 super chat and scolding. <laughs> um, the, uh, in the gaming sphere, what happened was that there was this group of people, right? They had a certain level of influence. Evil Hat, for example, had an enormous amount of influence around 2013 to 15, right? Or 16 or so, right? Um, and, and so did Olivia Field. Sorry? I said members of the Muslim Brotherhood. Let's not forget. I'm sorry. I didn't make the <laughs> um, They had an enormous level of, incident, of influence, and they decided that they were going to engage in cancellation campaigns on anyone who disagreed with them ideologically. That was the fundamental point of it, right? Like in 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 the case in my case, right? I was a lib I'm a libertarian with conservative leanings. I'm a I'm not a a, a, a socialist libertarian. I'm a free market capitalism libertarian, I'm a strong, strong defender of free speech, right? And that for them is already wrong, right? Free speech is an evil to them because they've read Marcuse and they say that they, they, it points out that free speech cannot be permitted, right? Uh, in in Grim Jim's terms, it was again, because, you know, he's very lefty, he's Labour Party, right? He voted Remain, right? But, but again, he's a great believer in free speech and he kind of likes you know, um, sexy content, right? And that was his crime. And Zach's, right? Like Zach would be in any other universe. In, in fact, if Zach had shown up now, or if he'd shown up ten years before he did, he would have been a left-wing superstar of the of the RPG hobby. The problem is he showed up right around the time where the third wave feminist discourse was profoundly anti-sex, right? And he was a porn star. He did porn. And so just for that point, they were never going to accept him. And, and of course, Zach being Zach, since they didn't accept him, he went on the rampage against them, you know, and then the rest was history for him. You know, like he, he really picked, he, it was the wrong moment for him. And that's what screwed him over, you know. James Raggy, again, he, he would publish stuff that was triggering um, and he believed in free speech, and those were all, those were the real reasons. It was nothing. None of none of the people mentioned did anything actually wrong, other than disagreeing with these people. And they went so hard in this cancellation campaign. And you can say that probably the vast majority of liberally inclined gamers were not actually supporting that cancellation, but they were too scared to do anything about it because that radical wing has captured the left with this threat. That if you don't do what they say, they're going to go after you. And this is like literal in that on Twitter, for example, I know people, many, many people who were contacted by one of these people that they happen to have been following because they like them. Right. And those people say to them, look, you've got to, to block the RPG pundit or else we're going to block you and we're going to we're going to put you on a list. You know, and so they were. Yeah, you know, the ones that contacted me basically told those people to fuck off. But how many dozens or hundreds did they contact that that said, oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't realize he was problematic, you know, and and, and blocked me, you know. And they, they did this for, for a decade and a half, you know, like they just did this constantly. So, so, to say, uh, so my point is that because of their cowardice, the left has a collective blame on this. And so do many people on the right, moderate right wing people were absolutely crapping their pants with fear at the thought of standing up to these people. There was a time, 
Like nowadays, if I say something in opposition to these people, I have hundreds of people that will come on and say it too. In 2013, often I was the only voice, or maybe me and Grim Jim, or me and Zach, right? Like there was just a tiny number of us who had the fucking guts to stand up to these assholes. And I get a ton of people, including many people in the industry, right? Game designers that you would know their names that right. would write to me in private and say, oh, I totally agree with you, but these guys are out of control and all this, but I just can't say it because it'll ruin me, you know? And that was the atmosphere that all this was happening under, right? So it, it, to, to, to say that this was not a big deal is, is just not true for those of us who were there, you know? Oh, I mean, look, I mean, it, it sounds as though, I mean, look, I mean, the, the, the best I could do is, is to say that it sounds as though it was a very smaller community at some point, because all I can relate to now is that I'm seeing, you know, a TTRBG scene that is still niche, but consists of, you know, thousands of participants. So it's hard for me to imagine a world where people are, you know, blocking people en masse to the degree where people are experiencing it, other than if you were in personal friend groups. Well, I, I don't think, no, the OSR by 2000. 14 when when consultant gate happened was already quite big it was about as big as it is now probably some people have left some people have come in but i don't think that like the peak growth of the osr was when fourth edition came out it's from 2008 until 2014 that was when it boomed right. and the difference is that the difference is that now there's less there are more people that are fed up and people who are less scared and and people like me who for years have stood up to these people stood up to these people and suddenly people started to realize that if you stand up to them, you beat them. And, and then more people started speaking out. And the more people that speak out, the more people that feel brave enough to speak out, you know. But it was for a while, all it was was a giant climate of fear. So this climate of fear. So what did you say or do that made people say, we're going to we're going to block this guy. We're going to X this guy out of the scene. Well, you could say two things, right? One is ideological, the other one is personal, right? The ideological part of it is that I strongly stood up to any attempts to, to engage in, in canceling someone for purely ideological purposes, right? That I stood up for free speech. They hate free speech, right? And the other, the personal thing is that in in my interactions with people that I disagree with, I'm an asshole. <laughs> and so I'm very outspoken and I can be, I can be really biting and I can be extremely, um, I can be extremely offensive when I want to be, um, but none of which is harassment, right? Like during the consultant gate thing, right? When, when they right. claimed that me and Zach had to be fired and banned for life from being in any, in any gaming company's employee and all of this sort of stuff, they made the claims that I had engaged in harassment campaigns with people, that Zach had engaged in harassment campaigns with people, that um, that that Zach they claimed had sexually harassed people online and stuff like that, and literally none of that was true, right? Like they, there was Wizards of the Coast looked at this and they were they were and believe me, had they found one instance where you know if I had uttered a death threat at someone or if Zach had had gone to some woman and threatened to rape her or something like that, we would have been out on our asses, you know, and it didn't happen because nobody had that evidence. There was nothing about that that, that, that took place, right? But they kept repeating it over and over again. And one of these people, Bruce Baugh, who was not mentioned in the article, but he's a, another, you know, fat sack of shit. Um, he was uh, pretty well-known game designer at that time, you know. Um, he had just openly stated that I was, he, he claimed that I had been opposed to the diverse language in the D&D player's handbook in the section on, on sex and gender, that I had like tried a campaign to stop that or something, right? And that was completely taken out of his ass. It was a total invention. And everybody in Wizards knew this because, you know, certainly Mike Merles did, who was the person I talked with the most, because I never did anything of the sort. You know, I have no, I had no objection to, to what that document is. Ironically, nowadays, the left objects to, to that, and they have since changed it to make it much more radical than it originally was, because now they claimed it was transphobic, right? even though back then, they were all claiming that it was like a wonderful step forward, right? Um, but Bruce Baugh was confronted about this several times, and he says, I'm still going to say it, right? Like he, he basically admitted that it was a lie, and just kept going with it. He kept lying, 
you know, and, and a lot of these people did that. They did it over, they did it with Grim Jim with the claim that he supports rape, you know, like it, it, they, they would try to pick the most horrible thing they could imagine and then just repeat it over and over again so that, you know, if you keep saying it, people start to think, oh, well, this, this, might, this might be true or it must be true, right? And that well, was the sort well, why, of stuff that they did. Why, why, did, why would they go after Grim Jim? Like, why did they decide to single him out and go after him? and say that they say that thing about him like when they when they came when the guy that came after me this guy Corey good decided to say that i was linked to this dark state cabal it was because i kept on making videos every time he would make an upload or make a, a blog post saying that he had this transmission from from the you know blue sphere being alliance and the blue avians i would go through it and i would pick it apart and talk about how nonsensical it was and so that just infuriated him more and more and so the more i would grow in size the more he would get incensed and come after me so why would they decide to go after grim jim what would what would why would he piss why would they piss the grim jim so grim jim had written a number of products for large companies um he had written the munchkin's guide to power gaming i believe for steve jackson he won an origin awards for that i'm looking oh, at his cool. at his wikipedia right now just to not make any mistakes and then he had written other products for sla industries for postmodern studios um he did a it wasn't the book of vile darkness but it was another one of these kind of um it was a it was a, he's up in the, on the chat he, he said books something. That, that, that had like some kind of kinky content to it right like grim jim like zach is a kinkster right and uh and and basically that was the one that first caught the attention of people right so he was a better in in the early 2000s or so um he was probably better known than i was um and and again this was at the time just around when me too was happening and all that and and third wave feminism was profoundly anti-sex at least anti-heterosexual sex right and anything that had salaciousness in it, they were opposed, right? Like one of these people that was doing these attacks was a, a woman named Tracy Hurley. And Tracy Hurley was famous for doing an article about how, you know, Alina the Cleric from the Red Box of D&D, &D, remember in the Red Box oh, D&D? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Starter Adventure, which is a solo adventure. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, yeah. No doubt, no doubt. Cleric named Alina, it was very heroic, Feet strong female character, ends up being killed by Bargle at the end of the adventure, and then you go off to try to avenge her against Bargle and stuff like that, right? And Alina the Cleric is a much beloved, um, what would you call it, uh, landmark character of D&D. &D. And she made this, this speech that, that Alina the Cleric is basically, um, a, a, is basically a, a victim of sexual harassment by gamers and that she's portrayed in a salacious way. And we're talking about a character, if you remember the, the, the image of Alina the Cleric, from neck to toe, she's in armor, right? And I said, no, but she has this cloth in front of her that moves in between her vagina. And I'm like, yeah, you stupid bitch, that's called a tabard. That's what knights wore, you know, <laughs> like it's it's the tabard with the cross, right? And she was doing this whole thing in this in this essay to talk about how Alina the cleric is a part of rape culture, right? Like that's the level of fanaticism that these people had, right? So, so they went after Grim basically the, because he was into that like. Observe that you said that she had. It's it's the fanaticism that. that well, she that's just had. one example, right? Like because again, the reason they went after Grim Jim was because he would have these these things that had like sexual content in them in in some right. of his products, right? Like that had sexy art or that had yeah none of it was like pornographic to the level of, or or phantasmagoric like some of the lamentations books have right like where you have you know, I don't know monsters coming out of women's body parts or things um no it was just kind of like benny hill style sexy party level of like like something that would be pg-14 or something like that you know like it, just just stupid stuff but for them, that was enough to say he's part of rape culture. And from there to say, oh, he must advocate in favor of rape in real life, you know, and th that's why they went after him, you know, okay. like okay. it's that level of insanity. This was like, you know, Maoist cultural revolution bullshit, right? Where like, if you're, you know, or, or Cam Cambodian Khmer Rouge shit, like if you wear glasses, you must be an intellectual and you should be put to death, you know, that sort of fanaticism. That's how crazy well, these people were, you know? 
That's how crazy that woman was. So that's what I keep on that wondering. woman and, and 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 three dozen other people that were involved those, there at, those at the three, beginning. Those three dozen other people, you know, three that dozen ran other. a bunch of companies and were very tied to many people in okay. the industry. Right? Like I mean, right, right. Oh, Green yeah, Ronin, yeah. Nicole Lindris, right? Like Green Ronin yeah. was huge in the early two thousands as a company. You know, right, right, right. No, yeah, I dig it. I dig it. Like a lot of these people were just you know terrible, terrible people. You know, so that's. That's the problem. So there, you know, and, and for a long time there was complicity by everybody else, right? That just kind of went along with it, you know. So that's that's the one of the big parts of my argument, you know. Um, all right. I don't know. Moving on, I guess. Um, one of the things that strikes me is you you kind of downplay the audience. Now there are there are some legitimate arguments you could make regarding the audience because no doubt. Cleo Wiseman probably recorded, who knows, maybe hours of, of conversations with each of these people, right? And here you have right. a very specific, you know, select choice of probably the worst things that they might have said, right? Like, I'm, I, I think that would be a fair thing to say, right? That, they, that it's probably that cherry picked for the per for the purpose of the article, which is to burn these people. Yes, and if, if, I got to tell, you, I tell you, Home Slice, if this is the worst of the worst, I got to tell you, this is, I took the notes here. I mean, this is, if this is the worst of the worst, this is not that, this is not, look, you'd want worse. Well, I think look, that if it's look, the worst of the worst, it's really bad, thing, right? But the, 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 the interesting thing is the worst thing I hear here. Okay, so the interesting thing about these audios is that it is directed not necessarily to show how bad these people were to let's say right-wing gamers it's to show how bad they are with each other right and so part of i think uh, if i was the guy who wrote this article the reason i would have done it this way was to to be able to cause fractures within their own group right like that probably some of this shit some of the other people didn't know about and suddenly it ties in oh this is why this thing happened to me was because this asshole was stabbing me in the back and i just didn't know it until now right so like that sort of stuff was a big part of, I think, the selection in particular of what this was, right? Um, but also, you know, you my, my most fundamental point is that let's, I mean, I'm not saying Zach wrote this, but let's say Zach wrote, that Zach Smith wrote the whole damn thing, right? And he took, um, he took uh, Weissman's material, right? Like that's completely theoretical here. Let's say he'd done that, right? Eighty percent of it is a pie to Zach and how wonderful he is. Which Let, let's let's let's, let's say a Zach you know? fan wrote it because we don't want to say that Zach wrote it because we don't want to get sued. No, I'm saying only theoretically. I am not declaring yeah, that he did anything. Only theoretically. Only theoretically, right? a man named Zach I'm doing wrote it for the purpose it. of this argument. If he had done this, right? Presuming, as we have accepted, that the audios are almost certainly real. Um, even if it is entirely a propaganda piece for the benefit of Zach Smith, written by Zach Smith, even if that was the case, that doesn't in any way mitigate the awfulness of what these people are and what they did, right? That is that that to, to claim that, oh, because the rest of it is is so messed up, it doesn't it, it doesn't mean that suddenly they get off the hook, right? And, and the most fundamental thing, and this is, you know, after everything I've just told you about what was going on in that time, is the fact that these people speaking to this person, Cleo Wiseman, who no doubt I'm sure presented herself as a fellow traveler, they were probably assuming that they were in a safe environment. They admitted this stuff because they thought that nobody on the other side would ever hear it, right? And that that's happened a lot over the years. <laughs> Look at... Uh, you know, the uh, Project Veritas and stuff like that, where you have, you know, some undercover reporter pretending to be, a, you know, on a gay date with some guy in the, in the you know, education department or something. And there they say, oh, yeah, yeah, we're totally trying to queer the kids or whatever. Right? Like they, they'll admit, or the abortion people admit, oh, yeah, we're selling human body parts, you know, and stuff like that, because they think they're among fellow, fellow travelers, right? And so this has given them away. The one that is the absolute giveaway is, is that... Um, you know, uh, the guy who said that you can do anything to the bad guys, right? Like, there, that is the fundamental perspective of the postmodern leftist, the postmodern progressive terrorist that, that is essentially opposed to all the classical liberal values. 
where they say, this person, if they're my enemy, I am completely justified to lie about them because there is no such thing as truth. It's all just narrative warfare. You know, Foucault taught them that, you know, before he, he went around infecting people with AIDS before he died, you know, intentionally. That's also true. You know, <laughs> but... Uh, I, you know, okay, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you know, Foucault, I mean, I don't know that... Hey, I don't know that about Foucault, but maybe I don't know enough about Foucault. There is but, a, you know, there's there's a crack hard enough to, right? to understand. He called it limit experiences, right? The, he he wanted to have experiences at the limit of death and of providing death. Anyways, anyways, it's a it's a it's a long, well-known secret in academia. But the point is that he said nothing is real, right? And and all that matters that is like to, win, to win a narrative conflict in order to push your ideas against the other person, semantic warfare, right? And so these people have admitted that that's what they do, right? That they are that they will say any lie about someone that is necessary for them to destroy that person so that their ideological enemy is removed, you know, and that's what they've been trying to do. Who said, who said that? Who, who said that? Who well, one of the, that? the guy in the audio who said, you know, we can do anything to the bad guys, you know? Well, okay. No, so I, I, I know the, 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 the clip that, that you're talking about. Yeah. But... I forget the name of the guy, but. Yeah, yeah. Well, that might have been an anonymous person. Um, you know, the, 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 there was an anonymous person that gained him out of the scene, was uh, was out of bounds, um, but, or no, the, the, the gained him out of the scene was, it's in their agenda, what they did to get him out of the scene was out of bounds. Oh, they right. It was, it was anonymous. It was impossible yeah. dealing with their guilt. They they might have said that because they were dealing with the guilt if they were wrong or something, but um, you know, look, and then there was a point where Brian Yak just said something to the effect of, uh, "I won't use this as a smoking gun because uh, uh, none of this, none of this nonsense, uh, you know, you know, saying this, you know, just uh, it, it doesn't amount to anything." But a lot of the stuff was that. I mean, look, I'm not trying to defend these people, these individual actors. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not trying to play, you know, semantic word games to create a defense for the indefensible. But I just want to make sure that at the same time that we're that we're that we're not, you know, just doing uh, a postmodern game ourselves and, you know, making things making statements mean what they don't necessarily mean you know we have an anonymous person at the the first audio clip is an anonymous person describing you know uh you know sticking it to people and stuff and you know what it feels like to go after people but they could be describing any number of online interactions and they could be describing like i've described it they could be describing what it feels like to teabag people on halo it's an out of context description. Then we have the Fiona Geist thing, where look, it's it's a it's a you know damning statement by her in regards to something that she said about James Raggy and and wanting to you know buy his stuff up on you know at a bankruptcy sale. Then you have Creedler and Yaksha making a hyperbolic statement about being banned by or blocked by every trans independent indie. TTRPG trans developer because of a disagreement with another person uh, on regarding a third of uh, uh, you know TTRPG developer of a controversial product. You know that's it amounts to gossip. Then you have Shu Skogan, who is I don't know talking about you know whether or not it sounds like she's responding to something that you know maybe in the thought or idea that maybe Zach S had put together put forward at some point regarding that if you didn't um, thoroughly investigate every claim uh, before you uh, of a story before you liked it or you know forwarded the story then you had you know performed some sort of you know moral or ethical bad and she's basically kind of debating the point. Yeah, well, can I, can I stop you there for a second? Sure, sure. She, Logan, in part, is right there that Zach does have that habit of saying that, right? Like that, that, that you have a kind of that, that if you say something that is that turns out to be false information, it means that you're somehow responsible for that, you know? 
Uh, but the part that's missing from there is that once that is proven to be a false accusation, a normal person would say, oh, well, then I retract it, right? But these people wouldn't, right? Like like I said, with the example of Bruce Baugh, with Ed James right. Etten, you know, the, the guy from, not James Etten, Etten from, from Something Awful, um, you know, these, these people would, you know, a lot of them were the, the originators of false statements and then would refuse to, to rebut them even after they were completely proven false. The Alexandrian, right? He has for years claimed that I'm a self-avowed white supremacist. He knows it's a complete lie. He keeps saying it everywhere he can, you know? But so then, that doesn't, but then that, that doesn't that go back to, to my original premise regarding um, Grim Jim's responsibility to take down his stream because he's now at this point said that, that in certain places that he knows that the article was, you know, published without the uh, consent of the, the author and he knows that, you know, that... No, the, well, the, hang the, on. I don't think there's the a difference between repeating a falsehood and, I, and, and continuing to report on something that is relevant, whether or not it was done with the consent of the author. The point is, it, Grim Jim wasn't the one who, who put out that article against the consent of the author. So even if, whether it was or not with the consent, you can still talk about it, right? It, it's like, you know, that's, that's something that I think... Um, but... The the point that you, you, you just made about you realize that that's the case, you should say, well, you know, it's quite possible that Cleo Weissman has no responsibility for this article, but it doesn't mean you don't get to talk about all the shit these people said or of the, you know, how bad the article itself is, right? It's still something newsworthy. But is it? I mean, is it? I mean, look, I mean, the, we if we just said that a person would have like some sort of moral or ethical culpability if they knew. That something had been falsified. Whether if they repeated a lie, if they repeated a lie, if they said, if you know, if Grim Jim had proof, or anyone had proof that Cleo Weisman didn't write this, and said, well, Cleo Weisman is obviously a bad person for having written this, when they know she didn't write it, then then in that case, yes, they would be they would be in the wrong, you know. But right. if they're saying, if, if what they're saying is, okay, Cleo Weissman didn't write this, but there's still a bunch of stuff here that is probably true. In fact, there's audio tape that is, you know, undeniably true now because the very people taped have admitted it, you know. So you can still talk about those things, you know. Yeah, but don't you think that you should at least say that that the article is, well, I mean, if you want, well, how about this? What well, didn't he, I mean, didn't up, he say so on a video? I mean, didn't he on the video himself say that Cleo Weissman didn't, didn't, didn't approve this? You know, like... So what else well, is he, he supposed said, to do? He said it in places, but wouldn't it be more accurate for him to just say, leave up the audio because we know the audio is these people, but take down the article because the article could be could be giving excessive legal liability and professional liability to this person. Who well, that's, that's, by the that's the responsibility of the people who put out the article. It's not his responsibility to, to ignore that. Like, otherwise, any time, I don't know, let's say you have a, a whistleblower that reveals some private corporate malfeasance right are you supposed to say well you know we can't report you know cnn says we can't report on this corporate malfeasance because that that wasn't authorized to be released to the public right like that that doesn't make sense right it's, it's still newsworthy yeah but well, for, well there's the questions about whether or not this well there's questions about whether or not this is newsworthy because all the information contained within the article seems to have already been within the purview of people's public knowledge people already knew what had occurred between, you know, knew about Zach's legal history, knew about what had happened with, you know, you almost know, all the, I'll the grant you know, almost all the dead stuff is is retread of stuff that Zach himself right. has said before, right? But, right. So, um, so the, but the article is not necessary part, for what had happened or to discuss the first what had part, happened. Though, the part that has these people making admissions, those admissions are new, right? Those things that they're saying there are stuff that we didn't know about them before. We knew a whole bunch what, of what other. Did, what, did, what, what I mean, what, what, what did, I mean? You, you can hear the audio. What, what, where do you see in this audio some big admission? Well, um, let me take let me take a quick look through it here again. Um, well, for starters, when you have you know Anon saying that uh, you know uh, you're charged with the duty to remove the bad person or whatever, and you know anyone who says that doesn't feel as good as fucking lying, right? Like there's. You know, that, that they feel justified in going after, they felt justified in going after us because they saw it as a, as though we were the bad guys, right? Um, that's, a, that's an anonymous, that's an anonymous person, right? Yeah. 
And did they say the people that they were going after? No, but we can assume who they were, right? Like, I mean, can we? But, 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 you know, no, we, unless you we, think Cleo just picked some random dude and had him say it, you know? Wait, but, wait, 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 wait. We, we, but we don't know. It's an, it's an anonymous. It's a person that's identified as anonymous, right? Yes. And we've already, we've already kind of been talking about the fact that we don't know that that even if Dr. Cleo Weissman was involved in this article. We don't know what other parties were involved in the production and 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 distribution. All right, so you're, you're, you're saying maybe that guy is a plant and the other ones aren't. I guess that's maybe. possible. And and maybe he could be talking about whatever, and we don't know who he's talking about. Okay, so you've got Brian Yaksha, Pathfinder guy, and Morgborg guy, which is like Morgborg is the most overblown, idiotic game in the OSR. But okay. Um, Key I don't point know about it being overblown. Sorry? I don't know about the most idiotic. I mean, that's, you know what I mean? The, the... I mean, apart from the art style, you know, like there's nothing new in it. It's there's all nothing art. In it. I agree. It's, 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 yeah, there's, there's, no, there's, there's no, no there. Yeah. No, no, no meat to it. Um, anyway, so he, he pointed out the way that these people, you know, shit talk to each other, created this internal toxic environment, you know, which, you know, has at times been independently confirmed by other people that have gotten out of that circle, like especially um, Taylor Lane, for example, who was part of the, the the kind of story gamer circle of the OSR and realized how horrible it was and then jumped ship to the regular OSR, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, these are, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Fiona Maeve Geis, the stuff she said, obviously, is 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 quite damning. Um, and and admitted that it's basically that they're jealous of people making money, which is just that's another thing that is just unbelievable, right? Because, and, but we know it to be true because again, Taylor Lane said the same thing about the 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 woke OSR, right? Um, that they think because probably because all of them are are not very good at what they do, that there's like this limited pie of money that could be gotten, right? And so they create these like vicious circles of hierarchy where only certain people get promoted and other ones don't. And you have to, you know, you have to do your time and then maybe they'll let you and, you know, try to push your products too, because they're terrified of someone more talented than them getting the money that they think they deserve, right? And that's the woke OSR. And it's so different than the regular OSR where we do have our fights, especially in YouTube land, right? But um, the o the regular OSR is, is constantly about people uh, promoting other people's stuff because the whole point of the OSR is that it's a common design movement, right? So like, let's say for example, Cine Nomine, right? Um, Stars Without Number and all of the cities without number, right. et cetera. All of those, that guy's a huge success, right? The Red Room, right? Those guys, I will have no problem promoting their books because I know that if more people buy Cine Nomine's books or the Red Room's books, they're also going to look at other OSR stuff, and then they'll probably buy my books too, right? It's not a closed circle. It's not a limited pie, right? The more that we encourage each other, because the, 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 the great advantage that the OSR has as a design movement is that the rules are, 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 are all compatible with each other. So someone can play Lion and Dragon and run it with old school essentials, right? And use stuff from Lamentations books in it, you know, and you can, and, and it's all, and it all fits, right? So, RPG Ponda, so like, listen, I would, RPG Ponda, sorry? Listen, philosophically, logically, can you support these statements? Over here, we're like this, but over there, they act like this. This sounds like, come on, this really? Well, that proof on. has been presented more than once now, right? Like, the, the standards of what they of who they promote or don't are based on a combination of time served plus ideological purity, right? And and I mean that's proven in this article by the statements of but, Fiona Geist herself. With, with, and listen, these, what you, you keep on going to these people. These are like four, five, six people. Yeah, but they are they, they dealt they, with in 2014, and I get it. They suck but ass. They were, they, they, but they were, and in some circles, some of them, like Olivia Hill, still are major figures in that part of the indie scene, right? Like, they're people that have enormous amounts of, of, of flex, of influence in those areas, you know? In the same way that maybe I have a lot of influence in the, the anti-woke OSR, right? So, 
right. if I promote someone's channel or if I promote someone's book, you know, I uh, get people asking me to do that all the time. And most of the times I do it if it's, you know, because it looks like something interesting and I'll promote but, it. And I, but, I won't think twice about it because the, 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 the thing is not a closed circuit. It's not a limited pie. You know, and the, the bigger the OSR right. gets, the more money I'm going to make too, right? So they're just... They're, they're using this Marxist model of capitalism that says that if one person makes money, they stole that money from somebody else, right? Whereas, whereas the truth is that, that in, you know, the OSR is, is potentially, and it is in, in the anti-woke OSR, a free market where the more people that are buying OSR stuff, the more money everybody's going to make. But why do you think that that's not happening on the left? Because if you look at games like Cairn and Into the Odd by Chris McDowell, who is like apparently a big time harasser because he believes on a prima facie basis the, the, the testimony of sexual assault claimants. Oh, no. You know, a lot of that stuff is creative commons and like, you know, Yaksha Gal's Cairn system and all that stuff is a lot of it's, you know, open source and like Troika, you know, the, a lot of this, a lot of this stuff is based on open share like licenses and stuff. So I don't know why well, you're Troika is like that because it's just a rip off of fighting fantasy, but sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why I like it. But, but I mean, yeah, but yeah, but, but doesn't that, doesn't that go against your whole, all your claims that you just made about. No, not as such. You're talking about specific, you're talking about specific products that are, that are doing stuff that might be open source and, and, and so on, and and so other people could theoretically write a Troika source book, but whether mm -hmm. or not that that like let's say some newbie right shows up and decides to do a Troika source book, it'll depend. That happens all the time. Yeah, but it'll whether or not other people in that movement will will then boost that person will depend entirely on whether or not they're playing ball with this kind of pyramid scheme that they have. I mean, Taylor Lane exposed all of that when when they jumped ship from. <laughs> From the woke OSR to the regular OSR, you know. Do you, do you, do you ever go to itch.io that the website itch.io? Yeah, yeah, that's their like little home base. Sure. Yeah, people. I mean, you know, you don't really need people to promote you. They're just they're all over there, and it's like you know, pay what you want. And you get <laughs> so, some Troika yeah. into the into the search bar. All the Troika stuff comes up. Yeah. And you wait time down. Yes, and on drive through, you can search for for a, a a product line, and and the same thing will happen. But that still isn't like, you know, the vast majority of people who write RPG products will right. sell a dozen copies of it, right? And, and yeah. so if you want to actually make it, part of what you need to do is networking, right? And the networking in, in their ambience is, is very structured and controlled by a, by a kind of little cabal of people who decide who's going to get, get uh, boosted and who isn't, you know? And that makes a big difference, right? Like, I mean, it, to, if some guy has just written their first D and D adventure, or you know, an OSR D and D adventure, and tomorrow I go on my, you know, on on my Twitter and say, "Oh, check this out, guys! It looks really good." That guy's gonna gonna make a ton of sales he wouldn't have made otherwise. But you know? that you you just you just described exactly what you described on the left. It's it's you're 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 the you're just but, the guy. But the on difference the is, just like, but the difference is the back. conditions under which they'll do that, right? Because for them. It becomes this complete quid pro, quid pro quo, right? Like Taylor Lane was told that on they would need to spend a couple of years doing the opposite, which is to say, like, imagine if I told that little guy, I said, "Look, you're you're just starting out here, buddy. So here's what you have to do: you have to make an account on on Twitter and on I don't know Facebook and wherever else, TikTok, and you have to spend a whole bunch of time talking about how incredible my games are, and then in like two years." You make a game, and I might say that your game is really good too because you've scratched my back, right? And that's how they do it. That's that. I mean, that that was exposed a little while ago. I did a video about it. You can look it up later. But Taylor Lane. Lane. Taylor Lane, yeah. She, okay. she they, they talked about that, yeah. Okay. But um, I mean, but I, then, all I know is that if you go to itch.io and enter, enter in Troika or OSR, if you, if you yeah, yeah, of FAR, course you can. I mean, it's it's so not. It's product, not that there isn't the someone the, who can be a breakaway. It's not that there isn't someone that can be a breakaway success entirely by just putting stuff out there and 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 you know catching a wave, right? But it but certainly like, helps if you have people already in the community that promote it, you know. I mean, who's promoting anybody? I mean, like even if you promote someone, I mean, no one's breaking away and doing anything in the OSR. I mean, it's just I mean, it is what it is, right? We're like kind of like at maximum capacity here. 
Well, first of all, I don't think the OSR is at maximum capacity. I think it's got it's got a, little, a, 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 a an enormous amount of room for new people to come in and do new things. Look at the Red Room, for example. The Red Room only started a YouTube channel, I think, like two years ago. Okay. And then they started doing books, right? And and they started doing these books, and people like me noticed that they they were good books. Like they sent me a review copy. I looked at it. I did a very good review about it, right? And uh, and so suddenly those books started selling. Now they've got like this whole multiverse of books. They've just done a second edition of all. They've, 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 they have been almost as prolific as I am in less time than I have. Um, right. And, and, and have jumped up. Getting, kicked up kicked, getting, kicked, getting themselves kicked off of drive through RPG. They did. They did. And then yeah. in spite of that, they're still being a success because of that community promotion, right? Like, the Red Room store that they opened, I've started doing, and this is an ad for all of the people watching right now, um, The Pundit Files, which is a, my, my new series of short supplements, is available only at the Red Room store, and they are they are great, and you should check them out. The newest one is, right now is number four, uh, which is fast uh, Pundit Files issue four, Fast NPC Generation, um, Pundit Files... Three is uh, Martial Artist of the Song Dynasty. That's the martial artist class for Lion and Dragon. Number two is the Dead City, an adventure that you can plug into just about any setting. And number one is Tables to Shake Up Your Campaign. And very, very soon, I think tomorrow, we will have number five coming out, which is, um, what is it now? Number five is the Silk Road uh, City Guide to Baghdad. So it's a complete city setting for the city of Baghdad in the Sword and Caravan campaign. And any one of these are available on PDF only from the Red Room store. And the price is about three fifty. Check it out. Yeah. <laughs> While you're there, check out all the other Red Room's products, you know, because they have an enormous amount of good products of their own and from other writers that are doing quite well for them, you know. So, you know. Would you, would you promote like a communist leftist product on your, in your, in your network? Well, as a rule, I wouldn't promote any product that is very strongly ideological in, in any side, right? Because my, you know, if you look at my games, none of my games have an ideological agenda to them. I mean, I guess the closest one to having an ideological agenda is the Invisible College, just because it's set in the modern setting. And because the main, like the care, the, the organization you belong to, the Invisible College, is a group that is essentially they champion the the liberal values you know they were they were the they, they came out of the the rosicrucian movement of the 17th century right but and so they fight for human liberation against groups that want to oppress humanity but uh you know that's about as political as i get in any of these games right um so i'm what, not what, a fan. What, what about what about a historical what about a, like what about like you know if it was like a bx clone but set in like a world war ii germany Well, I mean, it would if if the agenda of it was the Germans were right, I would definitely not promote that. If that's what you're suggesting, no, 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 no. Just, you know, what what if it was what if it was like a BX clone of World War II Poland or France? Well, I, I don't think those would be necessarily political. It could be a historical. Game. I mean, there is Operation Box, for example, which is which is a, an OFR game with the you know core rules of D&D compatible with any of my games that uh, is where where you play british or american commandos fighting missions in world war 2 right uh, but i don't think that's a political i mean I, I it's not a contemporary political comedy what i mean is if it's if you have a game that's like you know oh this is this is like set in a fantasy setting but it's actually about you know um I don't know. It's 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 anti-abortion or it's pro-abortion. I'm probably not going to support that game. Like if it's if it's I'm of the the same opinion of, as Hank Hill, right? Like Christian rock doesn't make Christianity better. It just makes rock worse. You know, that's that's always been my position. I'm I'm just kidding. Well, no, because if we were talking about you know promotion of games and you know what I mean, like and what they do on the left and you know versus you know what what's happening over here. I, I don't I mean, know what if it's a, if I someone, mean, look, if I mean, someone is left wing, right? I mean, Grim Jim is left wing, and I I I promoted machinations of the princess of the, of the space princess many times. Right, right. Um, and Griff Morgan, who wrote, who he didn't write, he he he, he found and republished Tonisborg in, in an incredible Kickstarter with this it's this beautiful book um, that includes like 
an, a version of what the original D and D rules were as played by the Arneson group. Uh, it's just an incredible book. And I mean, he's very openly, you know, he's, he's a Democrat, right? But I, I promote it because the game is nothing about that, right? Neither is Machinations of the, of the Space Princess, right? So, yeah, so it's a good game to promote it, right? It's not strictly, for me, it's not strictly about political litmus tests, right? But certainly for the other side, for the, the woke OSR, it is, right? I, I mean, like, you keep on saying the woke OSR, and I'm just, I'm just, it, it, it's this thing. It's this notion that I have, and it's this thing that I'm testing, is this notion that, over here, it's the same thing with this, like the, the Zach guess, the saint who walks amongst us. I'm really pushing back on and testing you on this, this whole notion that we're great over here. We're fantastic planet. And those douchebags over here, you know, the, like, look, I'm even looking at the chat. This guy can't accept that, you know, he's with the baddies. And what I'm saying is people are people, right? People are people. I'm not saying that on that people on the ideological left don't engage in hierarchical patriarch, you know, dumbass power structures and don't do dumb things. But I'm saying, are we really going to say that on that people on the ideological right are have some sort of, you know, claim to the, the moral high ground and are doing things or, or is it really just the case? Well, that let me put it, it's, it's very simple. If you say, do you support free speech? And if someone says, yes, they have the moral high ground. Right. Sure. If, if, and, and almost all these people will say, no, I don't support hate speech. Yeah. And hate speech is right. defined as speech they don't like. And therefore, they lose the moral high that's, ground. That's it, not, that's not, it's not yeah. speech they don't like. Hate speech is, look, I mean, what, what, no, they define the definition in, in all kinds of ways, right? If you say, I oppose illegal immigration, they might say that's hate speech. And therefore, you should and be canceled. And they, then that would be, and that would be a person that whose definition of hate speech is skewed, wrong. Obtuse but, but what they define as hate speech is always going to be something they don't like. You know, that's 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 that's. that's, that's but that listen, they, if we go to defining the other the other side by the worst example that the other side can produce, we are in you know is you know zero sum game. We're just always going to find. Look, if we go on YouTube. We can play the game of, you know, the, the YouTube the guys that make the video of the SJW bizarro rainbow haired weirdo saying things like, you say illegal immigration is wrong, then you're a neo-Nazi or whatever, you know, you know, mm -hmm. yelling and screaming jigglypuff at, you know, Jordan Peterson, you know, conventions or whatever. And, and defining that as what yeah, well, Raggy, the moment they tried to force the, the moment they tried to force the moment they tried to force Jim Raggy off of drive through RPG was when he had a picture taken with Jordan Peterson. That was it. That was the, the whole reason for it, you know. And they tried to force it, all of his products off of drive through RPG for that. You know? <laughs> Luckily, drive through RPG didn't do that, probably because he makes them too much money, right? But well, but, or, or maybe because that was no reason to get get someone kicked off of drive through RPG, right? Well, I mean, what would mean, but they kicked other people off for for equally stupid reasons, you know. Well, um, look if if there's a if there's a question about why someone was kicked off of drive through RPG, we can look at each individual example because here here's what I know. I've seen people complain about this was censorship and this was wrong and this happened and and, and each individual example. You know, sometimes we find that the person came against and offended dr drive through RPGs clearly defined terms of service. And sometimes we see really egregious examples of people that were clearly trying to make examples of themselves and trying to basically, it seems like, make a name for themselves as this, you know, oh, you know, our freedom of speech was, you know, in impugned or our, yeah, our right well, to free expression was impugned. That's true. And I, I called out Venger Satanis and the Red Room on occasions where they did that. And, 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 right. and, you know, and then a bunch of people on the OSR got really mad at me for that, including some people, even though the Red Room and I, like they took that criticism and they're fine with it. Right. But there are some people who on behalf of the Red Room are so outraged that they still go around posting hate speech about me. You know, like, but but and, and so that is true. But there's also been cases where it was probably really unjustified what happened. You know, like um, the, the fact that Zach was canceled everywhere because of the allegations that Mandy Morbid did 
um, you know, again, it was during the Me Too era. So it was like, you know, the, this was a really bad moment for his girlfriend to turn on him. Um, but, uh, you know, it, in retrospect, it, it, it was unjustified, right? Because it has never been, none of the things she claimed has ever been proven, you know, like, and, and to, to just fire the guy, you know, like to not just fire the guy, but no product of his can be sold, right? Like Lamentations was forced to, to drop any product that Zach had worked on and, and so on and so forth. Um, and it was just because a whole bunch of this outrage brigade brigaded drive through and threatened them until they did that, you know. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know. I, I don't, I, 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 that's your testimony. I have no reason to doubt your testimony. I, I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know the facts of the case. Um, all right. Let's take a look at some of the things people are saying in the chat here. Oh, they're lovely. Um, let me see. Uh, <laughs> a lot of internal speech going on while we were debating, apparently. Um, and quite a lot of spam. Again, this is really weird. I've never had these people just showing up and spamming my my chat before today. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm guessing someone's sending it. Um, Jestro says, this guy doesn't even know who Taylor Lane mean is. This example is meaningless to him. Well, maybe. I don't know. But, but, you know again, the, if, if so, you can later be educated in the video I did about it. Um, uh, some guy named Aaron Morton is trying to suggest you have a crack addiction, apparently. Apparently. He, he seems like a real big fan of mine. Or maybe it's me. And maybe the gentleman on the left. Maybe that's me. Maybe he thinks I'm... That's, but I am not smoking crack in my pipe. I'm smoking fantastic and completely natural tobacco. Um, let me see here. Uh, what else have we got? Man, I, we have they've they've been writing for a long time here while we were discussing. Um, L says Chanter, the woke OSR yesterday at Capricorn Forty Four claimed that the people who are driven out of D and D and made the OSR are ruining the OSR. Tanya DePass and Victor Raymond left the panel during that con meeting. So, you know, they just yeah, they always they're going to keep at it, right? But um, I. I mean, it, it is clear now that there are that finally wokeism is starting to lose the theme. So that's something at least. Um, what else have we got? Um, <laughs> oh, apparently, it's you with the crack problem. Oh well, there we go. Okay, so it's because of the pipe, I guess. <laughs> that I, I I guess that person has never seen a crack pipe and or and or a tobacco pipe. I'm not sure. Um, all right, so I guess we're caught up in the chat there. Um, well, at this point, I think I've covered every one of the points I wanted to make. Do you have some point about the article that you feel hasn't been discussed yet? I I, I, you know, I mean, I, I, th I think we probably, I think we probably got there. I mean, I think we, we got the points that we needed to make. And I think, look, I mean, I think we both, all I want to make sure that people know and understand is this, is that I am not trying to run cover for, for bad people who did bad things to anybody. I don't think that people deserve cancellation for, um, certainly not for ideological reasons i think artists have a right to make the art that they think that they are called to make and i think that you know cancellation campaigns are uncalled for um you know look but also at the same time you know look you know if we're li if, if you've got libertarian ideals companies have the right to work with who they want to work with and make the decision to not work with who they don't want to work with but they should obviously make those decisions you know, based on actual and factual information and people, you know, shouldn't be damned for rumors and innuendo. Yeah, um, I mean, people, people always say that on your side, but then that only seems but, to apply to companies that are on the side of the progressive stack, right? Because if, I don't know, if Mike Lindell does my pillows, he's got to be removed from all polite society, right? <laughs> like, um, 
You know, like it's always Listen, like the, right wing, hold on, hold on. the right wing gaming companies do not have a right to decide who they choose to work with or don't. Right. If they if you've got a company that doesn't have the right, you know, um, Mike so Lindell. Listen, Mike Lindell was canceled by Mike Lindell. OK, RPG. Mike Lindell was canceled by Mike Lindell not <laughs> stopping the down elevator. OK. Do you think Mike Lindell was... No, I think he was canceled by a massive media campaign about him. (laughs) No, he was canceled because he refused to let go his dream that that the election was stolen from Donald Trump. Okay? Like Giuliani. Okay, in I mean, 2016, there were a whole bunch of people that claimed that that there was election fraud against Hillary. In Georgia, they they claimed, and some people continue to claim that Stacey Abrams was cheated, right? And somehow, none of those people were targeted by the mass media to be dropped from all ta- suppliers. Did those right? people take it as far as Mike Lindell? Did they become as famous for doing that as Mike Lindell did? Or am I yeah, hearing about well, that now? From from celebrities and whatnot, you know. And and so, uh, apparently, election denial was okay then. It's just not okay in 2020 when it's uh, when it's a conservative that lost, you know. Mike, Mike, listen, listen. Part of the problem is this, is that there are certain people... Now, look, if a right, if a left-wing person was... If Mike Lindell was on... It, look, <laughs> you got to understand this, is that there are a lot of people here that are doing things that if people on the left did them, you'd be pointing out the fact that these people are complaining, they're complaining this, they're complaining that, but it's their own damn fault, Okay. There are a lot of people out here that are that are laying blame for a lot of things on it's the woke cancel culture that are doing this, their woke co- cancel culture doing that, that really have to take responsibility and know and understand that some of the things that they're suffering and some of the things that they might be going for is not the result of some cancel culture thing or some cancel culture action that took place, but it's really the result of their own their own doing. Mike Lindell was not canceled for you know, this this election thing that he had going on Z- went on past the point of of, of reasonableness. And look, he his so reasonableness. Ben, was, ben Gunman just did a two dollar super chat where he says, "In 2020, the Democratic National Convention put Stacey Abrams on the governor's panel, as if she was the governor of Georgia." Okay. <laughs> Okay. I, I don't know what that is. I, I don't know what to do with that information, buddy. I, I really don't. I'm, I'm not trying to. I really. It's, it my point is that any time my... it's a conservative, you say, well, but this is a result of the choices that that person made, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but when it's a liberal, you're like, no, the company should have the right to decide what they do. You know, like <laughs> that's that seems well, to be well, a wait, 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 wait. So Stacey Abrams got put on the governor's panel. What's the governor's mm-hmm. panel? Help me out here. It's the panel of Democratic. Governors, right? The people who are the governors of states at the Democratic National Convention, they have a panel, okay. and, and they invite her to sit there in one election, even though she had lost the election in 2016, right? Okay, so who, so what happened to the actual person who won the election? Well, he was a Republican, so he wouldn't have been at the DNC. But they invited this person to sit in there as though she had won the election. <laughs> so it was literal election denial, right? But okay, but but the person that was actually had won the election, he, he continued to serve as governor, right? So she yeah, was just that's, at the, the, that's the, not relevant to the point because I mean, Convention, Joe Biden right? is still president of the United States, right? But but everybody that supposedly engaged in election denial of the 2020 election, you know, some of these people are going are now spending years in prison because they yeah, they, 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 they participated in the insurrection on you know January insurrection. 6th. Yeah, okay, so BLM yeah, wasn't insurrection. an insurrection, but but you know, a bunch of guys walking around and looking at the the Capitol building was. Right? Yeah, some of them with weapons. That was look. The January six was, was there was only one because, weapon fired I mean, that day. You're, you're a historian, happen. right? You're, you're, a, you're a historian, right? I am. So you've heard the you've heard the term bloodless coup, right? Yeah, but this wasn't a coup. Nothing, nothing coup-like occurred. There was no nobody took over anything. The military wasn't involved. Nobody actually, you know, like it was it was a bunch of people doing oh, a protest. Yeah. And in that same oh. year, BLM forcibly entered the Capitol 
And, and all the, the the Congress, the Democratic congressmen came and knelt in front of them. You know, like they didn't arrest them. They didn't call that an insurrection. They're not. What, they what did that ask them? I don't know what you're, but, but I asked you, the, the question I'd asked you is if you had heard the term bloodless coup and, and you conceded that you had heard the term bloodless coup. Yeah, right? the term bloodless coup, but this wasn't a coup of any kind. Like, bloodless it wasn't rebellion. because it wasn't successful. No, there you was know, not, because but, there was, because it was just a protest. There was nobody in power that was behind this that had ended up engineering the necessary when, things to have a coup, you know? No, but it was, it, listen, Donald Trump and the election dispute was an attempt to overturn. We, we know this is why, you know, look, we're waiting for the Supreme Court to rule on the Colorado case, but the determination has been made at certain levels that it was an insurrection. Right in the U.S. courts. No, no, it wasn't. There was nothing insurrection about it. It's just now they are people in political positions of power are persecuting members of the other party like they do in the You know, that's That's what it was. Of it. Look, I remember. I remember famously. I once, you know, had a had you know a a screaming argument with my father where he where he he insisted that we never lost the Vietnam War because it wasn't a war. It was just a police action. Like you can use words, it is what it is. But the fact of the matter is that a huge portion of you know the the American jurisprudence, including the the a lot of a lot of very famous judges who work with the Federalist Society, disagree with you and think that Donald Trump is ineligible to serve as the president in the United States ever again well, because he, he never told that. them to commit an insurrection or to take over the government. He, he in fact. He he made a tweet saying, "Protest peacefully and then go home." And then that tweet was immediately blocked, and he was banned from Twitter. You know, like that's that's what actually happened, right? So there is this double discourse, right? There's one side that has taken over the centers of power, and this is happening at different scales. It's happening in the corporate world, it's happening in media and entertainment, and it's happening in academia, and it's been happening for a long time. This is the slow pro- the slow march through the institutions that that um, uh, Gramsci talked about in the 1940s, you know. Um, do you deny that do you not do you deny that Roger Stone was a close political advisor to Donald Trump? No, he was. He was a close political right. advisor to Donald Trump. Do you what deny about that Roger Stone was was caught on audio tape saying that we sh- at this point we need to go and get this person assassinate this person? I I don't know the details of that, but you know, um Right. That, that still wouldn't mean anything because he's a political advisor. It doesn't mean that he had the power to so, do it. Right. And you know that certain other people well, involved in, in the... power, right? District attorneys who choose to let people go free after they've shot someone because they're of a certain race, um, but other people who stop someone from murdering someone because they're of a certain race are going to be sent to prison for life, you know, um, that is... See, now, Some this power, is why, using that power why, for ideological purposes, listen, right? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I like you, but I'm going to tell you something. It's the statements that you're making right now that people make people like the Alexandrians say things like, you're, you're a white supremacist and you're a racist. <laughs> because I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying that they are the ones that are engaging in segregation. You know, like, and but they're the ones that, have, that, that are putting a racial you agenda on the, people the, the, racist. Of the law. You're a lawyer. You know that law is, justice is supposed to be equal justice under the law, which can only happen if justice is colorblind. Anything right. else, and you're engaging in social engineering. I Listen, I understand. I understand how I understand how you feel, but I'm but I'm saying to you is that the way that you're expressing yourself and the way that you're that you're perceiving things is the is is the reason why people might look at you and say this guy is you know problematic and you know and troublesome. No, that that's the way most people on the right see it, and a lot of normies see it nowadays. Is that that there is because it's very clear that there is you know there is this agenda that is very open now of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Which is uh, an agenda that, instead of choosing a colorblind society, is intentionally creating a society with a racial hierarchy, right? And that's that's horrific. That is completely contrary to all liberal values. What, what do you, where do you think the, where do you think that white people are on the on the racial hierarchy of this this new agenda? 
Well, it, the, the the point is that the 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 hierarchy of the the progressive stack is leading to activities that, if anybody had looked at this twenty years ago, would have said, would have said, no, this is a, a terrible injustice. Like when 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 you have companies saying, uh, we are going to, you know, air, airline companies saying. Come hell or high water, half of all of our pilots are going to be people of color, right? And so then the determining factor is that you're a person of color, you know, as opposed to actual ability or merit, you know. That's that's the opposite of what was always the classical liberal value that many people on the left, and remember, I used to be on the left. And I always tell people in the 1990s, everybody would have said I'm a leftist because I believe in free speech. I believe that everybody, you know, all races are fundamentally equal. You know, that, that we should have a society based on the content of character, not the color of skin. And all of those things were left wing talking points. Right now, if you're free speech, if you believe that all races are equal and that we should judge people on the content of character and merit rather than on the color of skin, you are a MAGA, you know, alt right, uh, you know, uh, was uh, deplorable, you know, like that's what that's what what it, what it says. I didn't abandon the left. The left abandoned me. You know, they abandoned all of the classical liberal values that made our civilization great and have replaced it with race communism, you know, and, and gender communism and all of this other stuff that is really um, that is really going to end up destabilizing our society to a third world level. You know, uh, listen, I don't know. I, I, I my attitude about it is I think like diversity and inclusion means that we're all trying to get to a level playing field where we're all judged you know, equally. And I think that some of the things that you're saying, you know, indicates that, you know, you're angry about something, but I don't know why. I don't know, because I, I think that, you know, white, you know, well, I'm angry about the danger that this represents to our ability to continue functioning as a civilization, you know, that, that, that if you've got a policy that is based on this idea that you have to, um, that, that, that what you have to do is create an equality of outcome for everyone at the expense of individual liberty and at the expense of, um, of, of actual promotion of good ideas over bad ones and capable people over incapable people. Um, and especially if you're using the measurement of, of what you do on inbound inherent traits right like if you were to say that that um someone by virtue of having white skin should be promoted and and benefited with certain benefits from the government or you know also for hiring or for things like that over and above people who have darker skin that's an atrocity right and that is the atrocity that is happening today you know, it's it's just happening with the you know like the the alt right people who are actually you know race nationalists right that are that are um, that are ethno nationalists and what have you that are racists. Um, yeah, I have all of the same ideas as the woke progressive left. They just cheer for different skin tones. It's but otherwise they believe the same thing. They believe in segregation. They believe in in promoting a certain skin color over another. They believe in promoting a certain type of sexuality over another. Um, and, I and, so. I mean, they I just, think, I and they both think that, that, that Jewish people are a problem, right? Like that's, that, that, that they, they have that in every category. They agree on pretty much that. They believe that races shouldn't mix. They believe that a interracial marriage is, in, is, is, is problematic. You know, that all of them, they, they have all of the same ideas because it's the horseshoe theory in action, right? That, that, you either believe I, I in you. I, values or you 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 collapse into the barbarism of tribalism, you know, and that's what's happening now. I think I think you have a skewed perception of what people on the left think, and I think it, I think it's just uh, you know well, you my need perception to is based on people. actual policies that people are enacting, you know, okay. and that's the real issue. Okay, I love <laughs> well, it. I think I think we've covered the the RPG talk, anyways, and uh, I I do want to thank you for coming here and for for making. Uh, thank you for having me. I hope we talk again. I think I think we got a, I think we got I think we got a good yeah, show. Well, um, you, 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 you,
presentation of your positions on this on this argument. There were some places that we were in total agreement on and other places where we discussed in a way where we both gave as good as we got. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. Um, I'm expecting you to be canceled at any time now because of this. I doubt oh, that we're, we're going going down to in your, going your down live stream place. again, you know, <laughs> because uh, this is now yeah, Olivia Hill is the type of person that tells people you better block the pundit or else you're you're going to be on never, our bad. I, I never bought no. What, are you kidding me? Never, never. I hope you have me on again. I'll have you on my channel or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, you can get a few, house, so. a few hundred more people on your RPG channel and I'll be glad to come in there at some no, point. No, no, listen. Well, check this out. Listen, on my on my main channel, on the CW Chanter channel, I've got just a little sub. I don't know. How many people, do you, how many subs do you have on your main, on this channel here? On this channel, uh, about seven thousand five hundred or so. Okay, so on my on my main my, my main channel, CW Chanter, which is like I guess you know, the main channel, I got a little under five thousand sub that's subscribers, right? That's big enough for you, right? If well, that's on, on that channel, that's a non RPG channel, right? That's where you're talking about your new age stuff. Yeah, but, but I mean, it's it's. It, but I mean, we do like if we talk politics, that would be the place to do. We could talk politics. Here, right, right. I can, that's possible. That's possible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, does anyone else from the chat have any last minute questions for me or for my guest tonight, uh, or any other comments before we we close up? This would be the moment to do it. Apparently, Napoleon has a question. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, and make your question. We may or may not answer. <laughs> I hope you had fun, RPG. I, mean, I loved it, man. I, hope I you did. Had fun. I did. Um, so, Life with Key said, Happy Black History Month. <laughs> uh, Kobenizer said, Imagine being ignorant of cultural Marxism. What a maroon. I'm guessing that one was for you. Uh, Probably. Uh, Boss Bully Boy says, This was the best live stream I've heard in a long time. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, Alex Taylor says, it's so satisfying hearing someone say these things directly to a leftist. It's so flabbergasting to see it all going over the leftist head. Well, you know, that's that's the thing. I got to say, like, I mean, I remember because I started all my kind of RPG funded thing around 2005. And back then, people on the other side wanted to get into debates with me. Like, sometimes people politically on the other side for me, but also sometimes people just had, like, different theories about gaming than me. And, and there were debates. And like I said, this is the first time in like 10 years that someone who isn't more or less on my side, as, at least as far as the RPG hobby is concerned, has said, yes, I want to debate. You know, that's that's I'm very impressed by that. Um, Oswald so Spengler all went over my head, apparently. Oswald Spengler, I, don't think they were I, guess, I guess me getting it would me just be saying, my God, you're right. You're <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Is, I didn't you can't I expect miracles what? there. <laughs> Oswald Splendler says, do you think James Lindsay plays TTRPGs? I think he watches hentai. I don't know. I think James Lindsay would think TTRPGs are Gnostic or something like that. I'd say some, something around those lines. I, I don't suspect he's a gamer. Um, uh, Charles Anderson says, you should let Chanter shill his work since he came on stream. Well, Chanter, remind them again what your um, RPG YouTube channel is called. A blueberry wolf bridge, no intro RPG, right? Try and remember that. All right. Well, how about later you send it to me a DM on on X, and I'll 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 add it after once the video processes, once the live stream processes. Not a problem. Not a problem. I'll add the link so people who are interested can subscribe to you. Sounds um, good. And. Uh, L says, question, who has not given Meatball Tree Fitty for the latest pundit files on Red Room? Yeah, thank you. That's a very important question, L. If you haven't, check out the Red Room. If you don't like any of the four I've got so far, then tomorrow you can get an entire city guide for running adventures in Baghdad in the 12th century. So, you know, it, it's, it's going to be Talk quite Talk about decent. woke. Yeah. Well, you know, it was, the, it was the, the center of the world at one point. Um, all right, I guess that's about it for today. Then, if you if you this is the first time you've been on the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification button. Somebody was asking how come there was a live stream and I wasn't the, I, I didn't find out about it. Well, you know, you got to either hit the note. Well, I mean, hit the notification bell here so you get alerted to live streams. But I do know that sometimes, for whatever reason, that doesn't get through either. But if you're also on X, you can always 
you know, subscribe to me there and Casimir Urbanski there and, uh, and hit the notification bell there. And you'll have to put up with some political posting, but you'll, you'll also always be notified when I've got a new video Lovely. out. Doing a live stream. So, uh, yeah. And uh, share this video anywhere you think people will find it interesting or get pissed off about it. <laughs> and thank you, everyone. Check out all of my books, all my products. The link is always in the description of my videos to every one of my products. And uh, be sure to check them out, including the Invisible College, which has gotten a lot of promotion tonight. <laughs> so that's great. And uh, I guess we'll see you all later. So thank you very much. And uh, thanks again, CW, for coming aboard. Thank you for Let having me. me. If I can finish, end this thing uh, and bye to everyone. God bless.